Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of July 6th, episode 127, I think. We'll figure that out in post. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah. Sitting across me <laughs> digitally, as always, is not Alex, Mr. Emmett Watkins Jr. yourself. If you remember last week, Mr. Alex is going on it's a little bit of a maturity leave. You won't, you won't be the last of him, of course. You'll see him actually... In a couple days, we'll be doing a Quarry spoiler cast, so keep a lookout for that. That should go live, ideally Friday, maybe Saturday morning. So keep a lookout for the Quarry spoiler cast going live soon. But Mr. Emmett Watkins Jr., how are you doing? Howdy, howdy. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure hopping on here, of course. And uh, yeah, we luckily got a lot of news to talk about this morning, so I'm excited to get it cracking and... uh, in the free world. Speaking I don't news, know why I had a in the free freeze. In the free world, yeah. <laughs> a little Billy Joel there. I respect it. Now, before we get into what are you been playing, of course, let's get a quick rapid fire over with. Now, first thing first, Horizon Forbidden West has seen a recent update. I believe live today. Get a couple things. It gets variable refresh rate support and a higher refresh rate support. There's going to be a digi- uh, dynamic scaling with that VRR support that can scale up to 60 frames per second. And there is a target refresh rate uh, for either one around 60 to 120, depending on how your hardware works out. And then there's a new balanced mode that will mess with all of that above. Hmm. So go check that out. That is a patch, I believe, that went live this morning. Indeed. Now, I, mean, I don't know if you've seen this. This is hilarious. So Red Dead Online, if everyone knows Red Dead Redemption 2, launched with an online mode, similar to Grand Theft Auto Online, of course. The players inside of it are actually holding a funeral for the mode that is going to be live July 13th. So everyone's going to get on in a world. You're going to go dress. They they even said dress up in your best funeral clothes and come. (laughs) And they're going to have a funeral for the mode itself. This uh, July 13th marks the year anniversary of the last content update the game has gotten. So they are they are all getting together and just kind of mourning the death of the online mode. Um what I was when I was reading about this, the uh, CEO of Rockstar did mention like, yeah, we know people are um, wanting new updates, but we will. Uh, don't worry, it's not dead, is what he said. And uh, cut to a year later, it has not gotten an update. So my hearts go out <laughs> to all the Red Dead Online fans. I'm sure there are dozens of you. Yeah, I I am no stranger to being a fan of multiplayer games that no one cares about anymore. So, yep, yep. as Mr. I have the Titanfall 2 helmet right next to the monitor. So Marvel, mine is uh, Marvel Heroes. When that was oh, you were one of them. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, when it finally came to consoles, I was like, here's my chance. This is the MMO I'm going to get into. <laughs> I dropped like $20 on Venom or something. I played him and I was like, this is awesome. And then a month later they go, it's all gone in like three weeks or something like that. And I'm like, (laughs) what? And I remember Xbox themselves messaged me like, hey, we know Marvel Heroes is going online. We're going to re we're going to give you back the money you spent from (laughs) starting from like October of that year or something. I was like, cool. I guess I never (laughs) lost that money. That that was so, so strange that like they got to the console release. And then it just all went away. Like, it's just yeah. that fast. Like, oh, by the way, we're gone in three months. We, we don't have any money. I think that was, <laughs> is that Gazillion? I don't remember. Uh, I, I forget the name of the developer. I remember um, one of the hosts of the Comedy Button used to work there. And then mm. the day after they shut down, they were on KFGD talking about it. So I feel like I remember no. that almost like in my mind where they were like, yeah, yeah we, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> like, like, <kind> of <laughs> like, yeah, we, yeah, a lot of things like just crashed on us yeah. all at once and it just was over. I was tan. That's like. That's yeah, like super, super, real hard. Super strange, but yeah, shout out to the Red Dead folks. Um, it feels like Rockstar, if it's not Grand Theft Auto, they don't really care. They're not nah, really worrying about well, it. Even, we'll talk about it later. Even Grand Theft Auto sometimes doesn't all get all the love. Uh, if well, those, uh, remasters are anything to say about it. Five and forward, which we'll talk about. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Sucker mm-hmm. Punch came out. Well, they said it. Sucker Punch finally said it. They came out and just said it to us on a blog post detailing Infinite's two minutes and their legacy franchise. And speaking about their pants, they said the following, quote, as our games continue to grow in scale and complexity, they require the full attention of our studio with our focus on our current project. We have no plans to revisit Infamous or Sly Cooper right now. And no other studio is currently working on those projects related to those franchises either. End quote. Uh, they, they said it. They said it. They, they fucking said it. They ripped my uh, heart out and they just said it. 
I mean, I'm gonna be real. I don't care about Sly Cooper. I know there's a lot of people out there that do, but they said no one is working on Infamous. There are two games that are stranded on the PS3, and they're just like, ah. It's what rough is, stuff. I mean, does this hurt you at all? You you seem unfazed. I it's it hurts a little bit for them to sever the cord so aggressively like yeah. they're not even being mean about it no but they're being straightforward like we're not making anything <laughs> exactly and in the case of like uh sly cooper i i like some of those games i played one and two but uh i'm not necessarily crying about it mm. but there was a rumor that was going around about first off there was a rumor that infamous is being worked on in some capacity by a different studio that's been shut out and i'm a little upset about that because Me for too. his greatest spider for his greatest spider-man is I do miss original superhero IPs. I know Marvel's in their bag right now with all these types of games, but they are... I'm not saying we're there yet, but I could see them hitting an oversaturation point where every superhero thing, or every other game is a Marvel game. Um, We got Midnight Suns coming. We got Avengers already out. We got, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff everywhere from a bunch of different studios for Marvel. And then for Sly Cooper, they had that rumor where it was uh, the folks behind Concrete Genie were working with Sony Animation Mm. um, to make a new Sly Cooper. And that sounded actually incredible. So that sounds like one of those rumors that's like, that's too good to be true. (laughs) That sounds too good. It's too good to be true, but it's also like just plausible enough because like you think about those devs like concrete genie devs right before concrete concrete genie they made entwined which was oh, a right. smaller game that's right yeah so to think to put them on a full scale sly cooper sounds a little bit wild right. but if you think how do we expand and keep like the painterly aesthetic of concrete genie intact why not talk to sony animation it seems like synergy that makes a lot of sense if it was real <laughs> now it seems like okay that's just not gonna happen um but they very well could still be working together on something else but yeah as far as the two these two franchises go um it is a shame that we can't play sly cooper on modern consoles it's a shame it's a shame that we can't play if miss on modern consoles but other than that like i'm not dying for a new entry in either of these because i'm I being agree. killed elsewhere yeah, so yeah. I actually agree with that. I'm not saying we need a new Infamous or even a remake or anything like that, but just that the they even say it, like our legacy franchises. Like, yeah, this is part of your legacy. You should kind of like bring this up with you and let's not forget these great games. There's a lot of people that like Sly Cooper. I'm not one of them, but I know a lot of people enjoy those games. So just make a Sly collection. Cooper's good. Yeah, it's like Sly Cooper is good. I, I just I'm not a guy for the for I'm just not a platformer guy, so I I can't speak on this. Ah, stuff. all right, yeah, you should yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's not Mario, I barely pay attention to. It. Celeste is one of the like rare exceptions where I fell in love with that game. It's so good. Jeez, look, all right, um, but yeah, straight. Infamous, I would just love just a col- just collecting. You don't even and now I'm not even greedy. You don't even have to do anything to it. Just re-release it, and so it's just there, so I could play it. I will say I don't know if it's in your news uh, in the notes or not, but um, there is talk that Sony might be hiring more people for emulation purposes. So Interesting. I did not see this. No, I saw that there was a certain patent we'll talk about later, but I did not see this. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, we'll bring it up oh, during the patent. I remember part. reading about. Yeah, yeah, we'll cover that again. No, I actually remember reading about that. Now I, I found it. Um, interesting i'll say but i did not think it, yeah. it warranted but no that's a that's a good thing to bring up later uh mm-hmm. moving on xbox 360 games will no longer be a part of xbox game with gold starting in october not too much to write up about this it's just everything on the, on the paper they just said it's not going to be included anymore um i can't say i'm sad because the selection recently has been so bad i wouldn't be surprised if if that's the reason that this is happening like they almost kind of disguised it as like yeah the 360s are really bad so we're just gonna gonna make it shitty for uh, a long time and then it'll, it'll be easier to digest i don't think so i think i think they honestly are telling the truth where um they said that they're sli- they're reaching the limits of what they can make backwards compatible and like what can be games with gold so i can't be yeah. upset really if i'm being frank I'll yeah be i'm right there with you. i'll be interested to see if this enhances the xbox one games at all because it is been pretty bad with games with gold for a long time mm, we'll see I, I don't think it's gonna get all that much better i don't think but so i i do think there's a higher chance of getting games that you know what they are before you've seen them in gold <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> will those be great games probably still Pro- not probably but not. You, you'll know what they are <laughs> as previously leaked last week there will be a skull and bones reveal on july 7th 2 p.m eastern time and a second event september 10th 
3 p.m. Eastern time. I don't know if you saw this leak. There was a leak uh, for this mm -hmm. event and also a leak of the release date, um, which I believe is November 7th. Be very interested if it keeps it now, <laughs> according to a couple what? things that we have later on that we will yeah. talk about. Um, That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that is very funny. Uh, if you see the thumbnail, I'm sure you know what we're mentioning uh emmett you and uh, alex isn't as much so i i can uh i know you'll know what i'm talking about here but uh i just wrote out ea fucked around and found out so <laughs> if you remember what happened over the week uh ea posted the following on their twitter account again this is rapid fire so we won't get too much into it but there is a trend going around that you would say they're a 10 or she is a 10 basically of uh, referencing mm -hmm. that they are very pretty or attractive and you would then put something that ruins it. So you would say they're a 10, but they like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit as a random, <laughs> random fucking thing. So he, they wrote out EA said the following quote, they're a 10, but they only like playing single player games. And I only bring this up is because the fucking hilarious week I had just <laughs> watching people just pile on this tweet. Uh, one of my favorites, I don't remember who wrote it, but uh, they said, uh, we know <laughs> tens are a foreign concept to you, but this isn't this isn't one of them. And I was like, God damn, you guys are going for the throats. So, yeah, yeah they uh, uh, EA fucked around and found out. Yeah, they actually tweeted not an apology thing, but they were like, "The roast was deserved. Our bad on that." It was. <laughs> so it like, was. they ate, they ate a little bit of humble pie, which is nice. But yeah, they probably shouldn't have baked it to begin with. <laughs> no, um, probably not. Probably not wise, especially from EA. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you're able to talk shit right now. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> Moving on from rapid fire, we start the show, of course, with one single question I ask every single week to. Emmett Watkins Jr., what have you been playing? I've been playing... I was going to say I've been playing a lot. That's a lie. Um, I did, this morning, finally get around to beating Kirby in the Forgotten Land. How is that? I, I hear it's it gets better. Like, it starts off, like, pretty good, but then, like, the more you play it, it's more fun. It starts off as a pretty cute... Uh, very visually interesting platformer. Uh, it kind of people talked about it in a reveal trailer. It looks like near. It looks like The Last of Us, <laughs> wait, the whole wait, destroyed. Wait, wait, wait. What? Just like the the art style, oh, like oh, not oh, necessarily oh, oh. like we're not talking I like ultra you, realistic like Kirby's murdering people. Um, we're no, talking that's like specific the ruins, right, and things. Yeah, like Got civilization it. destroyed, overgrown, yep. and all that stuff. That type of vibe. But then as you keep playing, you're getting like more and more it's all like a slightly modern type of art style for the architecture mm. but it's all corrupted by like some type of nature so like later on you'll be in like these london type of like subway alley type things and, but it's all snowed over so like mm. you're gliding on ice and there's like snowballs being thrown and so you're that's in the really, real like, world really you're it's not the real world oh okay, there are okay. no humans in this game <laughs> okay. but it is very, like, architecturally, like, you're in malls, you're in theme parks, you're in things from the real world, but it's just slightly turned to where it's, like, a little bit fantasy. Like, there are billboards and stuff in the game, but it's all in this crazy made-up language. Uh, so it could be, like, an alien planet or a different universe, okay. something. Um, the game just gets crazier. When people talk about, oh, it gets really good t towards the end, the game goes full platinum. Like, mm. you want to talk about platinum games and how insane their games can get? Like, I wrote it, I said it on Twitter right after I beat the game. If Bayonetta 3 doesn't come out this year, I might be content because wow. this was a platinum ass platinum game by the end of it. Wow. Um, and, it and it stays cute the entire time. Like, the, you've seen Kirby, the little yeah. pink puffball. So much of the game is that cute. But then as you keep going, the bosses you're fighting and some of the things you're doing are more and more epic. And they're straight up like, I don't know if you ever played Wonderful 101. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't played it either. I still need to get to it. But the ending of that game was one of the most insane things I've ever seen. Uh, okay. This is inching towards that type of ending where it's like some straight up anime hit all the buttons to make everything happen. Very intense, like boss battle thing. Okay. Super hyper stylized. It's like, like I was thinking of like God of War three a lot towards the end of the game. The like that's fuck? the type of epic late epic level stuff that's going on i was thinking a lot of not just mighty number no. nine but also bayonetta the original one um with just all the insanity that goes on and it's really cute also like there's one scene where like a, a character 
quote unquote sacrifices himself at the end of the game. What is, and like, is this? Is, I, this is still Kirby you're talking about? <laughs> this is Kirby, yeah. And it's okay. it, they sacrifice himself towards the end of the game, and like I tear, I dropped the tear because I was like, oh no, my friend. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. It's 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 so cute that it's like very endearing, but it's also so epic. You're like, I can't believe I'm even fucking doing this. Um, and it makes for a good combo. Like, this is the first core Nintendo franchise I ever fell in love with. I played a lot wow. of Animal Crossing. Uh, I played a lot of Animal Crossing back in the day when that came out on Switch. But uh, at a certain point, I realized, oh, this is just chores. <laughs> like, I love this aesthetic, is, but no, I'm I don't want to do this chores for a hundred hours. Like you, like exactly, you have, to, you have to be in that type of game, right, to like that stuff. Exactly. So yeah, so, I shut so that I wanna, down. I want to piggyback on something you just said. This is your first mm-hmm. core franchise that you've enjoyed. So you're not a big Zelda Mario guy. Yeah, uh, I actually put in probably like twenty, ten to twenty hours on, into Breath of the Wild. Mm. Thought it was fine. Didn't really love it, but thought it was fine. Overrated. Mario Odyssey. It's a little overrated. Yeah, I'll say overrated. overrated. Yeah, yeah. It's overrated. Uh, you're the one who said it. You introduced I, I said that it. To the no, combo. Wait, come come after me. I'm the one that said it. All right. It's a little, <laughs> exactly. little overrated. Yeah. Just for me, it felt like, oh, I can't believe Zelda's this new thing. And I'm like, I've played this I've mechanic. I've played this 70 mechanic, this other mechanic. games like this. Yeah. What the exactly. fuck are we talking about here? Yeah. So, yeah, that one, Mario Odyssey played a little bit, and I was like, it's fine. Uh, yeah, most of the Nintendo games I've played, I'm like, these are okay. None of them are awful, but it's like, I don't really feel my passions aren't burning for any of them until yeah. right now at Kirby. Yeah, I, I'm actually right there with you. Switch is. I would even say Nintendo is by far my least played of anything, right? If you want to say franchise, if you want to say IP, if you want to say systems, all of that. Yeah. I just I don't gravitate towards those games. For, for with a few exceptions, like I will play Zelda, especially if it's Link to the Past. It's a incredible game. I will play um, Link Between Worlds, underrated on the 3DS. I wish they port it. Hopefully, they will one day. Um, I love those two games. Uh, Breath of the Wild again, good, but just way, way people are way too hype about that game. Um, yeah. but it's Imagine. good though but um, but yeah Fire Emblem but yeah I'm with you there I, I don't really gravitate towards Nintendo that much I have a sw- I actually have it right here I have a Switch It's this thing barely gets turned on I have um, Fire Emblem Warriors in this thing right now and it's just uh, every now and then I, I turn it on but I don't really play it that much yeah I will say when, when this rumored Metroid uh, remaster the, the Prime yeah, Metroid yeah. Prime yeah I'll Metroid definitely Prime. try that out yeah, I always wanted to play a Metroid Prime game, so yeah, yeah I'm ready Yeah, for we that. talked about that last week. Um, uh, just as a reminder for everyone, Jeff Grubb, I believe, last week said that a Prime 1 will be remastered and 2 or 3 will come later. So be, mm-hmm. be excited for that. Metroid Prime 4 will come out uh, exactly on 2026, so be, be excited. 2026. Yes, indeed. All right, Rumor Roundup. Rumor Remains of Edith Finch has been rated for PS5 and Xbox Series X. So mm. be ready for that. Anything gets rated, basically guaranteed that it's coming. Now, yeah. I don't know if you saw this, Emmett. Fucking hilarious thing happened during an Xbox live stream. I have not seen this. I got to so, check this out. Marvel's Avengers came online, right? It's a game going on. They recently added Jane Foster as Thor. The Mighty Thor is her name. And they had yeah. a on the Xbox Twitch channel, a little live stream with um, lead designer of the game, Brian Wagner. And uh, someone named Technic, or uh, I believe is how you or, uh, pronounce that. Um, and Technic uh, might have messed is up it a little bit with the Q at the end. Yes, it might be technique. Technique, technique. Yeah, makes way so. more sense. Makes way more sense. It's definitely <laughs> technique. So Technique said <laughs> the following. <Here> help. <laughs> yeah, Alex is usually the guy. who's like, you didn't say that right. Well, <laughs> you want a funny fact about She Hulk? Technique ask. I don't know if I could say this. I'll just say this. You said you don't. You, okay. I don't like the face Brian is making. Maybe I shouldn't say it. So this is all directed towards Brian. So he, he's going to go say something about She-Hulk, someone who has not been announced, but is, of course, coming to the game. Ever since the game, I believe, launched, it, the actual DLC tracker leaked, and we've known for a long time what is in the game. But he goes on to say, my acting coach is actually the voice of She-Hulk, causing Wagner to look nervously off camera. So he's like freaking out, probably looking at his guy like, why is he saying this? <laughs> and I won't say her name because I don't know if that's public knowledge yet. I think oh it is. It was announced with a question mark, right? So he's like, is it announced? And Wagner just goes, nope. We've never actually announced She-Hulk. We don't announce things, you know, and Technique goes, oh, uh, then never mind. I don't know if that's true, but hopefully the source will be right. <laughs> like, 
like he just he cries oh. at the end like oh, maybe that's not right then <laughs> but, uh. dude this is this mm. has to be up there with just you know, I it thought is about the watching most this clip. awkward thing. Yeah, watch the clip if you'd like. Over really quick, this is I, one of the most. I don't think I could take that awkwardness. It, just it hurts is one me. of the most <laughs> awkwardest things I've ever seen on camera in the games industry. Like we've had a few things. There's been some game award things that happen where people, you know, don't get propped in incorrectly and they don't know what to say. This is up there with like the clearly the lead designer is like, "Why are you talking? Why are you saying this?" He's freaking out a little bit. Like, stop talking. Like, you can't uh, don't say this. Like, you're gonna get in trouble is so so funny and if God. you want to see the clip i will say beware uh you can go check out the new story over on video games chronicle they will have it and it is something to behold the the lesson there is if you don't know don't act don't, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't just don't he even said it he said i don't know if i could say this so i was like don't say it <laughs> try not to be safe and now he's very sorry or maybe just <laughs> google really kick she hulk maybe maybe just do that <laughs> see if it's been announced yeah well, this is another rumor roundup uh there was a patent called quote systems and methods for converting a legacy code into an updated code end quote uh put out by sony themselves the patent not much to speak on because it's a patent it's very wordy so i'm not going to read all that nonsense but basically what the patent holds is a picture of many long gone peripherals things like the psi the ps go psp go um the playstation mouse the playstation move wand and all these things going through something called a wow. legacy reader so i'm imagining what this is is a patent that they probably put through to figure out certain games that require peripherals to maybe be converted into a code that can be read via a controller or something i don't know hmm. but it was a very interesting patent this isn't the first time we've seen patents from sony about uh backwards compatibility sure it's not gonna be the last i think they i think it's clear that they are trying to figure it out i have heard through multiple people that playstation themselves have a few working ps3 games on the ps5 Ooh. it's just something either they have a good reason to not release it or if it doesn't work ubiquitously enough or they haven't play tested enough i don't know but i'm i'm sure at some point we will get a ps3 natively on the ps5 when is the question uh you're do that's a mid that's a mid console life cycle thing i guarantee it because mm, they're gonna be they're gonna wait they're gonna wait until everyone's on ps5 to begin with because you're not getting ps3 games on ps4 like they're no, not gonna no, no. they need that extra horsepower to make up for the cell yeah so yeah i i think they're gonna wait until more people have ps5s i think they're gonna wait until a lot of their bigger games come out and then when they start getting into lulls in between games then they can be like hey you can play the original infamous or you can play linger and shadows <laughs> or <Yeah>. whatever <laughs> linger and shadows. wow yeah i will say um they also might need a reason to do it right because mm, yeah when you're selling everything you can put on a shelf like why stop what you're doing like just let's keep the train rolling like you well, know i'm sure they are working on it but like there's not a fire under that similar to like mid ps3 generation towards that later uh half of that generation where like they were helping indies mm -hmm. out a lot and things like this but like now that they're selling all their shit they probably are like you know we'll work on it but like <laughs> let's focus on our games this is what this uh what is it dance uh who who brought you or something you know the same oh, like, dance, dance with the people who brought you yeah, yeah. you know so like hey god of war all these games spider-man they got us here so let's fucking worry about those you yeah. know we'll do this I, in the background i will say there might be a case of in the case of like xbox they they just bought activision that yeah. acquisition is unless the uk government has something to say about it that's going to be they wrapping don't. up here soon um yeah we'll see because they they have an investigation they're doing this morning blah blah blah, blah. i, I we'll read see. about that that seems to be just what they do okay I okay think. i don't think there's anything to worry about all right in that case yeah once that goes through you can imagine all those old activision games you know 360 or whatever they can get working on the new consoles that's all on game pass day one right and then that's making the classic games offering over on playstation look even worse by comparison because you're you're tr you're trickling out these psp games these playstation 2 games these playstation 3 games are still streaming only i do think that once that catalog is bolstered so much through game pass then playstation is going to look on their side and be like all right we got these ps3 games we're working on let's start putting them out so we can at least say that say we can we have it exactly yeah i, I think it's I more think... so 
I don't think anyone selling a PlayStation 5 exclusive is worried about it, but all the people who are worried about PlayStation Plus sales and all that stuff, like, hmm. they care. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I, um, you hit the, you hit a point there with, um, PlayStation where, like, yeah, yeah, like, I think once this deal goes through with Blizzard and Activision by, uh, being purchased, I ca- I can't even imagine what Game Pass is going to look like, but like they have to have something pre-prepared cuz I I we I think we're pretty positive that's going through. So like they might as well mm-hmm. take it as fact so they have to start getting ready for that to happen. I don't even know what Game Pass looks like with Activision Blizzard like being acquired. Like does that mean we have Crazy. all the Call of Duties on there? Like that's just Well, I We're talking they, in like I don't even understand what's going to happen when that happens. So that's we'll have to every see. Call of Duty that's prototype. That's fucking all the Diablos that made it to console. So at least yeah, three to um, Overwatch isn't a factor anymore. No. Uh, I guarantee you they're probably going to try and port stuff like World of Warcraft to consoles. So you're oh, probably getting that. That's guaranteed Hearthstone. almost now, right? Hearthstone, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Hearthstone probably makes sense. Yeah, you're, you're getting a lot of that stuff. And then shoot, there's a lot of like like Tony Hawk. We didn't even say all the Tony Hawk games. That's on Game Pass. Like that's going to be a big shot in their arm. And I think Sony's looking at that and they're saying, "Man, this is going to be a we lot." Gotta be, so we got to be ready. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta have something. And also, I don't know I'm if sure they're gonna they, have everything. But, I'm sure they yeah. have an idea of what's gonna be exclusive, but they also don't know what is because Microsoft isn't clear what the what what are what is exclusive. Some things are, some things not. So they're probably like, we don't even know what we're gonna get. So we have to basically work out deals now because we might be looking at like three four years without like some I don't know some random title that we're not thinking of right now like something like in that, development currently or so i don't yeah, know like that survival title that blizzard uh announced late last year yes like something like that uh, yeah. might end up being exclusive just because it's yeah. so early so yeah we'll see they we'll gotta start see. planning yeah this is this is yeah we're still in that weird limbo of like we we just don't know i had this to you now a little behind the scenes for everyone at, at home i um every time i see something on twitter i go oh emmett Watkins jr would love this and it's always <laughs> it always comes out that he liked it and that's the reason i'm looking at it to begin with so this man basically <laughs> curates my fucking twitter so we Hell have yeah. uh, a tweet here and i just wanted to pick your brain on this i literally added this because like he's gonna be on the way I, I need to know because i know he loves these these franchises um Def Jam fights. So it seems like they always fuck with people with this. Because I was going through some of the replies and they're like, "You do this like every year. Stop it, please." Yeah. Um. So, so Def Jam Records um released the following. Which one would you want to see next? So it was Jeff Jam fights. So their French uh franchise series, whatever you'd like to call it. And it's four. And then they have Atlanta, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Miami. And there, there's like just what would you like to see next now i this is like a tiered question one are they just doing this to mess with people two are they doing this for like twitter retweets or something or three it is this just for fun or like someone just has a twitter account and um do you like this yeah as a, as a jeff jam fan i'll, I'll say this because like i out of any the it, i didn't really play a lot of the def jam games growing up but that is definitely something I would want as a fan of hip hop and as a fan of crossover fighters. Like that's absolutely my shit. Um, Def Jam recording, they, their Twitter account has been, it's like every four months or so, they'll just put out a Def Jam meme or like a gift from the games or something to invoke those old games. And everyone, it's been like five years at it's this like point. It's like Insomniac when they like release like Sunset Overdrive gifts and things and people are like, oh, yeah, like, or, no, no, or no, they're you... just having fun, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or same thing with Infamous where they'll share yeah. like, oh, shout out to Infamous. And everybody's like, oh, remaster. And it's um, like Cole's birthday. It's like, oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming, everyone. It's like, no, no, no. no. Yeah, exactly. And at this point, people are just tired of it because it, in the case of Insomniac, yes, you're celebrating your legacy because you made all these games. Like, of course, have your anniversaries, tweets and all right, that stuff. Of course. Def Jam recording, you have artists you could be promoting <laughs> instead. Like Logic yeah. just hopped out of his record deal over there. Like you have other artists that I you didn't just know be that. Pro- Yeah, Logic has been on Def Jam pretty much his entire run. Yeah. Um, and Vinyl Days was his last album. And now, now he's out. Um but yeah, uh, well, not his last album. He's gonna I make understand. more music. I understand. <laughs> this he, he's yeah. very much logic is gonna make more music. Yes. Yeah, he he will not stop. No. Um. Anywho, yeah, Def Jam. It's 
it's more so that like y'all are just a recording label now. Y'all don't have to pull on the nostalgia for tweets and all this stuff. Mm. Just tweet about the music that y'all are putting out, and that's good enough. Um, because people are really tired of getting their chain pulled with these yeah. references to a dead franchise. Um, now, as far as this mean specifically, which one would you want to see next? Yeah, this is what I. This is the secondary question I got. What I mean, joking aside, like this is kind of fun. So I am curious. Like, is there one that you care about? Now, I am impartial, of course. So I, I definitely want Atlanta, <laughs> of course. But I was curious if you were uh, the same. Yeah, I'm. Here's the thing. I do want Atlanta just because not only am I from that area, born and raised in Georgia my whole life. Me too. But I also, oh, well, there you go. Huh, birds of a feather. Um, but also, why keep it? I don't like that Atlanta and Miami are separate because there's a lot of rappers from yeah, Miami. That is and true. There's a lot of rappers from ATL. Uh, that is a very good point. I, I honestly, I didn't even think about that. That is, that is almost. That's almost brother and sister, basically. Like, like, yeah, they, they I might really... as well be like related branches. Yeah, well, here's the thing: they sound a lot different. Like, you, you listen to some like, like Southern Florida rap and some like even Southern uh, Georgia rap, and it's like pretty different. Um, but I would still kind of combine the two, just make it you know call it the Southeast or something. Yeah, uh, and I think that would be incredible. Like, I could think like what was it, Zach Fox, who is a He's technically a comedian, but he has been rapping recently, and he's actually pretty good. Mm. Uh, he tweeted about this and was like, "ATL would be hilarious as a as a Def Jam game." Because the thing about Atlanta, there is a, if, there is a specific tweet that I saw that you liked, and I was like, "That's <laughs> fucking hilarious." You know what I'm talking about? I cannot yep, bring it up. Yeah, but I yep. was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm not going to bring up been, the specific tweet." We've all been to Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Atlanta is like because I can't speak to Florida specifically, but I know for Atlanta, it is a cross section of the ultra rich because it's Atlanta. We're yep. kind of the Hollywood of the South, and then it's a cross section of you know the hood, the ghetto, people all the who stuff aren't you hear afraid people to rap die. about. It. Yeah, the people who aren't afraid to die. People <laughs> you ever drive in stuff. Atlanta? You know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly, and then you have a like. There's a very big queer community in Atlanta as well, like. You you go anywhere and you'll find members of that community. So yep. to have all that represented in a fighting game would be kind of hilarious. I'm thinking you could have you'd have just as many J JIDs, Young Thugs, T well maybe not Ti. He's been in some shit recently. Um, but then you'd have like your Saucy Santanas over here. <laughs> like you'd have a lot of interesting things in there. So ATL is of course the one I'd want. But you know I feel like Miami would be a good fit too because you got some folks from down there. Another person who I don't really like, but as a fighting game character, I think people would really flock to it. Kodak Black's from Orlando. <laughs> so actually, no, Kodak Black is from Miami. So like oh, that that well, one would be a character to yeah. put there. Um, but yeah, I think it would make more sense to combine them both. But if I had to fight for one, Atlanta's the one. Yeah, I'm definitely Just too seeing much Atlanta. culture there. It's way yeah. too much. And very rare. Atlanta, huge city. It's very rare that we see a game set in Atlanta. It's Oh I've been God. asking for a GTA Watch Dogs something set in Atlanta. I would kill for that. I would too. I would too. That huh. that would be very cool because it's very yeah. rare that I go play games that look anywhere near like where I live. It's always San Francisco, LA. Um, a couple times it's like Vancouver and things, but it's almost always like those in New York. Of course, it'd be mm -hmm. cool to see something that I'm sure those people enjoy. Like I I know a lot of people enjoy San Francisco so much because it's like. Uh, and I, I think the of Watch Dogs 2 specifically because it's so uh, uh, it's fitting in that culture, thank very you. specific culture thank you. to that yes, city yes. Yeah. And, it, and it looks almost uh, pitch perfect when usually San Francisco is put into a game I don't know why, mm -hmm. maybe it's because a lot of these devs are stationed there so they just yeah. know how to make San Francisco in a game but um, I would love yeah. a Watch Dogs 2 version of Atlanta in a game so Watch Dogs 2 is like I remember people driving around like I would watch content creators drive around and be like, this is where this is. And this is it. like they would like know where to go. I'm like, God, I would love I would love to mm -hmm. be able to know where I'm going because it's in Atlanta. It'd be so cool. God. Let me drive to the Cheetah Strip Club. I know where that is on the map. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, at this point, Atlanta is so culturally relevant. You got the Donald Glover show. You got. You know, so, every other rapper out there yes. talking about landmarks. You got Migos who are performing at the Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> like, come on. Like, Atlanta's on the map at this point. We're long overdue for some type of Atlanta Overdue. Game. That's a great way to end it. Now into the actual news for the show. 
This is for the doc. Starting it off, it's official. Right at the finish line to be included in the show. PlayStation and Sony Santa Monica today revealed the release date and the several editions for God of War Ragnarok. The release date, you ask? It's, of course, November 9th, 2022. And the editions of the games are as followed. The launch edition, the digital deluxe edition, the collector edition, and the Yashnia edition. Now... Not much else was talked about the game. Even the reveal trailer itself was literally 30 seconds. Didn't show much. It was really just Kratos and Atreus fighting things and then finding uh, Fenrir, which much bigger than I thought. Uh, yeah. Very big dog, but very excited to see where this game comes. I almost, it won't happen, but I almost wish that's all we get. And yeah. On November 9th, we get <laughs> God of War and we haven't seen anything since today would be mm, so good not gonna happen yeah not gonna happen. pr no it's not gonna happen but first off i want to ask you did you see the day coming we haven't had you on really to speculate because these last this last month has been honestly really annoying because that's all people have been talking about is like where's god of war oh there's a state mm-hmm. of play oh there's not oh it's for june 30th oh no it's not i got canceled Oh, it's for the and then we just did that for like two weeks and then now it's it's done and now now we can stop talking about it. What do you think of this release date? Um, I think this release date's fine. This totally fits in line with the typical you know big fall game. I, I question <clears throat> one thing I question about this one: how close is this to Game Awards? Because this is about a month before the Game Awards comes out, so right. I question if this will even be eligible for. It should be. I believe the cutout is two weeks before. Okay, I think. If- if that's the case, then yeah, good for them, and it'll be it'll be this versus Elden Ring, and my poor baby Aloy will be sidelined once again. But once again, uh, she always, always, the luck. I, they always bring her to the prom, but she's never prom queen. Nope. Um, anywho, uh, I I'm looking forward to the game. I was honestly, I was kind of hoping it would come out next year just to piss off everybody. Me too. But yeah, because I'm like, once you start sending dick pics, I'm praying for your downfall. Um, <laughs> so yeah that did happen developers were getting sent a whole bunch of bad things because you know fans are impatient but um yeah the game is probably going to be fine i would also be cool if they just didn't show us anything and just (sighs) let the game come out but uh i forget who it was someone was in my twitter mentions talking about this but uh they're expecting because the fact that they just like announced a date through a blog post and a tweet feels a little bit like like i made a gif of this rihanna throwing the money at somebody like nonchalantly like it's like here, here here's your shit. fucking date God. yeah exactly That's yeah you it's so- <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> it feels like they just wanted to get this shit out not only as fast as possible but just like like out of spite a little bit does just it because everyone's so losing i'm glad their mind. you brought that up is it a little weird so like it, we got the release date kind of unceremoniously. We got a 30 second trailer. Like you said, we got a blog post and they've detailed the additions of the game. On July I, 6th around like hmm. a, like t- like noon Eastern time, like it just seems like it was just I mean like you said like here, like leave us yeah. alone kind of I it kind of seems that way now. There was the rumor that this was supposed to happen last week. I'm very curious if this was always the plan. If something happened, maybe a trailer got messed up. I, I really don't know. I'm literally just spitballing. It's just, it's almost weird that it was just 30 seconds. Here's the additions. It's November 9th. Goodbye. Which I I'll say I would like, but that this isn't usually what they do. I'll, I'll say this real quick. Um, it only feels weird because the original God of War reboot did the exact same thing. They just tweeted out the date. They tweeted out, you know, the blog post link, and that's how it was revealed. The The release date, that's how it was revealed. Oh. The only reason it feels weird here is because all we've gotten is one gameplay trailer and that very short CG trailer that came out with this. We haven't gotten a full-on demo. We haven't seen the HUD of this game, which I imagine is going to be very similar to the original. But yeah. like, we haven't seen full-on gameplay of this for longer than a couple splices and in-engine cutscenes. So that's why this feels weird, the fact that it is still coming out this year, and they're saying, hey, you can spend money on it. But we haven't seen it be played. And we were kind of in a similar position with, like, uh, I feel like Horizon was in a similar position where I feel like we didn't really get a demo of that. Um, well, I guess I, we had. I feel, it felt like everything we saw of that game was Damn. very like, 
like no, we saw snippets of gameplay and yeah, breakdowns, right. but you, I don't think I knew what the HUD of that game looked like until it was out. We didn't have um, much, if I remember correctly. Yes. We had that. We had the E3 big, ele- you know, elephant fight on the beach. Oh my god! Look oh at yeah, we had that demo. But, we had that demo. But True. I believe that 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 was our biggest look until the game came out. I'm yeah, and sure. that was like a year and a half before the game came out too. Yeah. So yeah, that's why it feels weird for God of War. The fact it's coming out in like five months now, four months, and we don't know what this game looks like in a moment to moment basis. Once again, I'm sure it's gonna be very similar to the original, but um that's it's only gonna be it feels DLC. I was like, Where all the boat animations about? are the same, and it's like, why change them? <laughs> why change that? <laughs> game takes so, long enough to make without making new animations. It Jeez. proves a lot of people just don't know what game development is. It's just, exactly. that, that's all it is. But uh, um, yeah, you you bring up a bunch of points that that I want to bring up too. Uh, I think also it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be pretty similar. I remember when it was announced for 2021. First off, you know that would never happen. But two, I was always on the impression, okay, this is a Miles Morales game. Like this is a smaller shorter experience with not as much content as the original game now that we're a year plus after basically when it was supposed to launch i'm thinking it might be a little heftier now with the dlc argument i understand what people are saying it looks very similar this what so this this started production probably right around when god of war came out probably a little bit before so it's been in the it's been in the background for four years so yeah. It's had its time, and it's going to look great. I'm sure it's going to look uh, great on the PS5. Remember, it has to run on a PS4, so it can't be that good. So it has mm-hmm. to scale accordingly. And they have to spend money on the PS4 port and things of that nature. But I'm excited. I think it's going to be good. I it will be curious to see if this gets the sequel-itis effect that a lot of games do, where if it's too similar, people start to bag on it a little more because the reason God of War was so good... And I'd be curious to see if you agree with this, is we didn't think it was going to be that good. That was kind of why we liked it so much. It was a surprise. It's yeah. It surprised us. That's why I was like, whoa, you're telling me the one where, like, basically the beginning of every game was just titties? Is this good? Like, this is pretty crazy. Come on. As someone who liked the... I, I'm I thought you were about to say, someone is like, who likes titties. I was like, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I do too. <laughs> who I'm saying, titties? No, that's not I'm my just, standpoint at all. I'm just saying, uh, like... it. W- the way it come across was very uh it, it, it was, was very deep. immature it was not very yeah deep. it was not we, deep. very like, shallow games in yes. god of war i'm like grieving with this father-son relationship in god of war 3 i'm screaming calliope while i'm stabbing Her- hercules in the face like the two very yeah. different feelings that i'm getting definitely i i can agree with you there and i do feel like I'm very interested to see if this is going to be like the legendary status, because here's the thing about God of War 2018, the reboot. I like that game a lot. It's Uh-oh. one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, OK. I, I love thought we were going to get a butt, but there is a butt <laughs> coming. When I say it's one of my favorite games of all time, I've told you I made my top 100. List. Yes. It's like number 50. <laughs> Shit. So like it's around there. So like I like God of War 3 more than it. I like wow. a lot of. Wow. I just I just do. It's one of those things where I played God of War the reboot and everyone said, oh, it's one of the greatest games ever. It's so great. And then people like Greg Miller were like, oh, and the platinum's good. So it's worth going for the platinum. I should have heard that and said, I'm going to play this game until I have gotten my fill and then come back later and maybe go for the platinum. Mm. Instead, what I did was play it for like a month and a half straight exclusively Damn, until I got the platinum. Half? Yeah, to be like the the Valkyries, the collectibles, and that's the thing, the collectibles were not hard to find, but you walk so slow and everything is so methodical well, where getting around was so tedious. Their maps point. in the end game were pretty bad. So for that everyone did. who doesn't remember, you might have rose colored glasses. If you were getting the uh collectibles after the fact, you would go to sections that were previously like when you would leave, they were broken down and they would still be broken down. So you would have to enter from a different location but you wouldn't know that till you got there mm-hmm. so like you would get to a, a collectible you're like all right time to go get it you'd get there and there'd be a giant cave in you'd be like well oh, how do i get here so like all right i guess i have to retrace like at the beginning so you have to go like yeah. to a different place i know a lot of people don't like the fast travel system in that game i actually liked it because i love the game because one i and i think i don't think people like it as much anymore but the single camera angle aspect yeah. I liked that it was trying its hardest to not put you in a menu. That that's what I liked. Like it seemed like that they were trying their very damnedest to not have you press start to look at something. Like they wanted you to stay in the game. They wanted you to be like, want 
immersion to be like the highest aspect of the yeah. game now until they, they added like, rpg elements until and they then... added rpg elements <laughs> and then you had to fucking change your gear and stuff and i was like th- there seems to be like a disconnect there but aside from that there seemed to be like we don't want you in menus we want you to like be immersed we want you to be kratos we want you to hang out with atreus and things like that so yeah I, i'll be curious uh, clearly they're adding the armor thing too and i'm like okay well i was kind of hoping we would stick with the try to immerse us as much as possible because i got super into god of war i know a lot of people didn't but oh yeah i fucking love that I game. broke my back playing god of war i like that game a lot um and by breaking my back i mean i sat in a bad chair for like four mm-hmm. hours straight playing it and i Blew stood up and out. realized i couldn't well i realized i couldn't stand anymore because i gave myself nerve damage on accident um but it's okay i got over it now i, I just have to not sleep wrong and i'll be okay um but yeah, I, I'm still looking forward to this game. I just got to be able to pace myself this time. Um, as far as these collector's editions go, I... Oh, I meant to ask you about that. Is this a cop for you? I'm getting... Not for me. I'm getting this collector's edition. You're telling me I'm getting a fucking Mjolnir Rapilka? Yeah, yeah. I'm buying See, this. that is very cool. I think that... I think it is a good collector's edition. I just don't think I need it because, number one, I mean... Let's see if I can lift this up. I have too much shit on this fucking room but it looks cool <laughs> like i have fuck, way though. too much oh it's awesome but like i need to calm down <laughs> i get it I long get story it. short so yeah so like i have way too many collector's editions and i already have the god of war reboot original collector's edition as i reassemble my camera god i shouldn't have moved my camera at all um <laughs> as soon as you did it, yeah. i was like you're brave i'm fucking terrified of moving my thing like, like yeah as soon as i move it because i have it so specific because it's a weird ass webcam i have it like against the wall so like if i do it i have to like slowly get it. <laughs> it's annoying it's fucking yeah, yeah, I should have thought of that beforehand. But uh, yeah, uh, I do think it is cool. I just, I don't have a need for it. I already got my Kratos and Atreus statue from the last collector's gotcha. edition. Um, but hey, Bayonetta 3, you, you drop a statue for that, I will make some fucking room. <laughs> you keep bringing up Bayonetta 3, and I'm curious what you think about this. It seems Nintendo is in a very unique situation. I don't think we've seen really since, I mean, we might have to go back to like Nintendo 64 to really find like this this much of a glut of releases what hmm. is your stance on that we're kind of doing this uh out of um out of the show because i'm not gonna yeah. bring this up again but i just i'm curious because yeah. you're a little more into nintendo than i am not you know no one like any <laughs> relatively in, yeah relative yeah. to me which is almost zero but i've been spitballing these things in the background i really haven't talked about it in the show before um as as much as i have just talking with people but what is your stance on nintendo right now we're seeing them possibly vamping up for a new switch release very soon possibly having breath of the wild 2 launch on there we could not see bayonetta again for another year we could still not see metro prime 4 for another year these are a lot of titles that have just we're not seeing what do you what do you think nintendo's at right now do you think they are in that in between of like well we have these games but we can just release them on a console and make people buy mm. that what do you think I think I think Nintendo is not pressured to do anything right now. I think they're still selling a decent. I bet you they're still selling a bunch of copies of Animal Crossing. That DLC came out last year. Yep. I'm sure that's still popular. Um, I think right now they're in the phase of we don't have to put out a bunch of AAA games every single quarter right now. Let's just focus on adding value to the Switch Online, the expansion pass, and all that stuff. And right now, I mean, we have Zelda Breath of the Wild two. You still need more work on it? Okay, we'll make it a simultaneous Switch Pro original Switch launch. Uh, Metroid Prime 4, I guarantee, was supposed to be out by now. But then when it got rebooted and when they announced, hey, it's not quite coming it's, along. It's we're gonna cle- have- yeah, it's clearly a mess. Like, they even said, kind of, without saying it, like, mm-hmm. we had to take away, like, who was making it. And we're going to have to re... They literally said restart, is what they said. Yeah. So I bet that's not coming until after Breath of the Wild 2 sometime. Probably Ooh. a decent couple years after that because you gotta imagine it got rebooted in what like 2019 18 yes something like that um so you gotta imagine during covid or not it was right before covid i'm pretty sure okay so it had to be 2019 and that's only been two years so you probably get at least two more um and then you want to talk about bayonetta that has they said it was coming out this year they have confirmed that it's just a quite it's a lot like god of war just give us a date. We're just waiting for a date. And the closer, if we get through the rest of the summer without a date, I will lose hope that it's coming out this year. Uh, yeah, every re- month, right? It, it gets less likely, right? Mm-hmm, I think it's pretty exactly. rare that they're going to come out like September and be like, 
see you in two months so yeah <laughs> exactly so well i for those three specifically i think that's what i think about it but like i feel like the switch pro is not quite on the horizon but it's definitely like I nintendo think kind I think of it's closer than a lot of people think i think it's closer because we're almost by the end of this year we will have had these new consoles for is it two years or three years uh they, um, they launched in 2020 2020 okay it will be two years into this console life cycle i bet you're getting the the nintendo always releases their thing in the middle of the rest of the generation so i'm thinking 2023 or 2024 that's when it's coming um so yep. th that's why i haven't bought a switch oled because i feel like in a year or so there's gonna be a new more powerful switch and that is my biggest complaint with the switch i don't want to play anything on it that isn't a nintendo game because even with kirby as i was talking about earlier half the items that have physics in the game run at like half the frame rate in the background <laughs> because they're trying to just keep the it, it's a really nice pretty sharp looking game but you can see the the trade-offs that they're making graphically so yeah i i think it's coming i think they're holding off on some of these games to release simultaneously with that new hardware but i don't think they're going to stop supporting the current switch anytime soon i think this is going to be a 3ds switch type of relationship for the first couple of years and then once everyone's on pro then they can actually take advantage of that hardware even more so yeah we'll see well said i almost yeah. echo everything you said I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see this new switch system within a year of today i, I just I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't really be talked at all just nintendo loves doing that shit they love in very slight changes so they can talk you into either upgrading or talk those people that are in the sidelines like oh you know, this is a perfect time to buy one x for xyz whatever it is yep yep we'll see about it <sighs> well let's move to bungie so had ali writing for the game posts Got some information about an upcoming Destiny project. If a LinkedIn profile is to be believed, we may have found what Bungie agreed to work on when they partnered with NetEase. The profile in question was a NetEase employ employee specifically, an artist at NetEase Games who worked on a, quote, unannounced first-person shooting mobile game, end quote. Mm. Now, this should be no not too much of a surprise if you started to pay attention mm. uh, and if you've been up to date with rumors and a few write-ups of last year where job postings for such a project like these were posted. Some background, if you don't remember, um, Bungie back in 2018 received a $100 million investment from NetEase Games for an unannounced project with, uh, with Bungie CEO uh, Pete Parsons at the time saying, quote, NetEase has a significant amount of experience in mobile that we do not have, end quote. This won't be all for the Destiny universe to be expanded. As a reminder, Sony purchased Bungie for $3.6 billion, and all the executives have been very open about using Sony's TV and movie studios to develop their own IP into more mediums. Let's not forget mm. Pete Parsons in his uh, announcement of the <laughs> of the purchase going, this is the start of a multimedia empire, like he is some fucking supervillain at the beginning of a Marvel movie. <laughs> like, I was like, dude, who talks like this? <laughs> I was about to say Disney, but yeah, that's, that's a true. supervillain. <laughs> that's true, yeah, might as well, right? But, For certain groups. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, I am going to be honest here. This does nothing for me. I, I do not care about mobile games. Um, I pretty much, I think you can find what any studio is working on if you have credible job postings. These are credible mm -hmm. job postings. I very much believe Bungie with NetEase is working on a mobile game, and that's just usually what NetEase does. So um, I don't really have too much to say here because I, I'm not in the mobile game scene, so I can't even pretend like I care about this. I love Bungie. I love <laughs> Destiny 2. I love all these things. This game will probably be some sort of lore expansion thing, whatever, that will explore the universe. I just cannot, I cannot pick my phone up and be like, oh, let's play a video game. Like, this is the thing I mm. scroll, doom scroll on Twitter and fuck around with Reddit and text people. Like, I just don't play games on this thing, so... I'm curious if you are a mobile gamer at all, if this does anything for you. I know you are somewhat into Destiny, like tangentially, like, you know, you, oh, that, that thing's cool over there, but you don't really play it. Yeah. But uh, what are your thoughts on the story? I'll say Destiny. Destiny's a solid game. I played I played a lot of Destiny 1, played a decent bit of Destiny 2 as well. But at a certain point, you know, pe people joke about it all the time in the Destiny community. Destiny isn't a game, it's a job. Yeah. So, yep. like, I just don't feel like keeping up with it to that degree, but it is very fun to play. Dude, I took, I, a, I took the last mm -hmm. three weeks off, not to interrupt, I apologize. I yeah, took the ahead. last three weeks of Destiny off. Fuck, dude. I, I come back and I'm like, Jesus, I still gotta, like, I still gotta, like, grind out the Castellium for more <laughs> patterns so I can unlock this, uh, this gun, so I can craft it's it, so I can then level up. And I was like, 
I'm gone. I'll turn this back on. <laughs> I'm doing, uh, let's play something else. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's rough out there. But um, but yeah, I enjoy Destiny. And so if they whether they bring a direct port of it to phones or if they just bring like a light version of it, I could be slightly interested in it because you talk about mobile gaming. I literally the last month or so, probably for most of June, I was playing exclusively mobile games because i was just in that mood yeah. i was going through apex legends mobile recently it came out uh i was going to i was playing cod mobile i was playing fortnite i was playing uh grim valor i played earlier this year which is a mobile game that i really loved metroidvania um and i got into dead effect 2 which i was really high on when i played it and now that i have some distance i'm like game's kind of mediocre but it's good for a mobile game <laughs> yep so I, I, I'm realizing that a lot of the mobile market is there are some good games legitimately, you know, stand toe to toe with your console games, your PC games. There's some good stuff on there, but sometimes you'll put a lens over what's there and think, oh, this game is actually really solid when it's only solid for the platform it's on compared to the lower scale games, the lower fidelity games that are on that platform. So to, ha to have like an, a direct example of something I experienced this week. Oh. I believe, kind of funny, did some sort of live stream that I was watching, or I, I like tuned in on, and they were uh, they had like a marketing deal with Disney Multiverses. Is that is that what uh, it's called? Yeah, the the Mirrorverse. No, Mirrorverse. Mirrorverse. Sorry. Yeah. And I was like, this looks really cool. I like the art style. I'm digging it. I go and download this fucking game, and I go, I, bro, I'm talking immediate nope. As soon as I realize what it is, I'm like, oh, you pay a shit ton of money, and you might get what you want. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's just why I, re I really at this point, I'm like, look, I get it. Whales will whale. You're going to get a shit ton of money from very <laughs> specific people. But just make it digestible or let me spend $20 so you leave me alone so I can play the game. Yeah, that's oh. that's really what I want, because at this point, I am convinced that you can because I got an Xbox controller with the clip on it. And I What's actually have uh, I have the Razer Kishi as well which like is that? or isn't supported it it's it's fine it's very flimsy it doesn't have like a solid back so whenever mm -hmm. there's no phone in it it just kind of flops around and if you hold it on the wrong side it just flops out also but they did have there's a new version of the razor kishi that has a more solid back so it doesn't just flop out but i also saw what i really want is i believe it's a power made it where it's another stand for your phone a controller grip type thing but the controller that you put it on, you can switch it between USB-C and Bluetooth. Because certain okay. games, like if you boot up uh, Call of Duty Mobile, it only supports Bluetooth controllers. If you use the Razer Kishi, won't accept it because that's plug-in. Wow. So like some games work better when it's plugged in. Some games work better when it's Bluetooth. So this new device can let you switch between both. And I'm thinking of picking that thing up. It's like 100 bucks, Even though I have an Xbox controller and I have a clip and I technically I'm fine. But... I've played plenty of mobile games now where if you get the controller with you, it it's awesome. It plays fine. It plays great. Feels good. All that stuff. I play Apex Legends Mobile. Feels good enough. <laughs> it's definitely not the main thing, but it's good enough. So I have faith that Bungie can make a fun game on a mobile device because yeah. that's no longer the question. Like you can make a fun game on a mobile device. It's a question of how is the monetization going to be? Is it going to be annoying? Is is the, the game? Answer is yes. <laughs> well i i it's not I all the time yeah because yeah, yeah. here's the thing you got stuff like diablo immortal which is just egregious but at the end of the day moment to moment gameplay in that game is still pretty fucking solid and as far as i understand um, it's mm -hmm. good till you hit level 60 right uh it, some no? people told me 30 <laughs> oh oh never mind then i, so, yeah. I could have swore i saw someone go like they were like uh they got to level 60 and went all right i'm done with the game because like i think at that point you're like you have to I, really, I don't understand the game, but I think you, you have to start grinding gems for and things yeah, and stuff. Because like they, uh, what is it? Blizzard promised that you wouldn't be able to buy new gear with real money, right. but they get around but, it by making you buy gems, and then yeah. the gems are how you upgrade your gear. So it's like, well, then what the fuck? Then, um, so yeah, it gets really difference? egregious the more you play. Yeah, it's one of those games where it's like, oh, this is fun to play. Then once you've been there a while, you got the suck in cost fallacy, and it's like, well, now I gotta pay money because I'm enjoying myself. So as long as this bungee thing isn't one of those where it's really trying to stretch you in your wallet, then you know, I have faith they can make a fun game. They just gotta nail all the other stuff around there. The fact they're working with Netties makes me think they won't, but we'll see. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that that is probably like the biggest thing where I was like. 
Yeah, I've seen what Netty's releases. I'll see you guys yeah. later. Like, I'm not touching that game. But I will say, this might color the picture of why Destiny themselves, oh, sorry, Destiny themselves, Bungie themselves <laughs> said, if you try to play Destiny 2 on your Steam Deck, we will fucking ban you. So, like, oh, that wow. makes a lot more sense now. Maybe it's for this game. Maybe they don't want you to play Destiny 2 Mobile because they want you to play this thing. I don't know. But they said, I remember them stating that uh, it will not work on uh, through Steam. And if you try, we will ban your account. And I was like, wow, why? Makes a lot more sense now. Well, all right. We'll see how that plays for them. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going back to 30 frames per second Destiny on <laughs> no. a phone or any t- anywhere. Because no. that... That game was not that great until it was 60 frames. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, this is an all timer. <laughs> God, I remember that was back when I was still lying to myself. And I was like, 30 frames. I don't really care. And then I, and once it was started to slowly get here, once the new generation came and 60 frames was getting more talked about, I was like, maybe I will like it. And I, I don't remember what the first game I played was. But when I was playing, I was like, never going back. Yeah, it was just yep. it was just like, I will never, ever. Yeah play a game in 30 frames ever again yeah half of my destiny 2 lifespan was spent on pc exclusively because it was at 60 or actually 100 and something frames once i got the new pc i have now yep. so i'm like yo that's this is the life <laughs> yeah yeah you don't feel like you're running through mud mm, yes according to raf volve an only leaker especially concerning modern warfare 2 specifically has revealed that the beta for this game will be early on playstation if you pre-order and the beta will be from september 15th to december 16th before it opens to all playstation users september 17th to december 19th crossplay tests will also be available for all platforms the game launches on for pre-orders it's early september 22nd to 23rd then everyone will be getting it september 24th to the 26th as a reminder the game will launch october 28th 2022 this is a quick one not really too much to talk about the beta is leaked a few times i think now i'm pretty sure everyone yeah. around this knows that yeah they still have pending playstation things probably for the next two years i wouldn't be surprised and mm-hmm. september 15th 16th congrats you guys will be getting it early september 17th 19th that'll be everyone so if you are on playstation you will have access to it pretty early and you'll be able to decide if you want to buy this game or not uh yes, are you indeed. a call of duty guy big call of duty guy i i I was talking about it excuse me i was talking about on twitter today um oh god i ate a whole bowl of fruit while we were recording and now it's kissing up with me um but yeah uh there's actually backwards compatible sale on xbox right now and i'm planning on buying call of duty 2 and 3 just so i can play the ones i haven't played because i have played every single call of duty from call of duty 4 modern warfare all the way up until right before vanguard i haven't booted up vanguard yet i played a lot of multiplayer but not the campaign so like yeah, I I'm all in on Call of Duty. I'm gonna play Modern Warfare two. I am I'm not even excited for it. Not because I think it's bad or anything, but just because I know I'm gonna play it. it I know like I'm gonna a... get it. It's like two K or Madden. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna get the new one. Like it's fine. Like you don't have to convince me. I'm already it's, there. It's known. Uh, it, I know mm-hmm. it's happening. It's like a yeah. it's, it's like a fucking black hole or something. Like we're gonna get to it. <laughs> When we die, exactly. it's gonna happen, you know, or yeah. something, the or like the heat of the death of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, but yeah. Yeah, it's, Jeez. it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. So like, I'm just, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna play it. I'm probably gonna like it. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm gonna hop into the beta because, like, man, I, I don't. I know I'm gonna play it. It's gonna be very similar to 2019. So and like, I have too many games. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, especially September, mm-hmm. like. They keep announcing stuff that's dropping in September, like Bio Mutants getting its next gen update. Like, oh man, I'm I'm gone. <laughs> you stole you stole an update. I didn't know if you saw it or not. I was ho- I was half hoping. I was like, maybe Emin hasn't seen it. It's in day oh, no. days. We'll recover Boy, over there. You were on top on of it. it. That was only like two hours ago too. So like you were on top of that shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, uh, moving on, Red Dead Redemption and Grand Theft Auto Four remasters may not be coming soon. So, known liquor named Tez. Which is a known Rockstar leaker, apparently, of one of the uh, uh, one of the most prestigious studios, Rockstar, has shelved all potential remakes following the poor reception of the Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition. Yes, that is the name. Also, note <laughs> that multiple outlets have confirmed this leak. The tweet reads as follows: "Quote." As per a reliable source with clear accuracy on Rockstar plans, remasters of Grand Theft Auto 4 and Red Dead Redemption 1 were on the table a few years ago, but Rockstar chose not to proceed with the projects in mind. The poor reception of the trilogy does not... Wait, DS. Uh, whatever. Might, might be a reason uh, behind that decision. 
end quote. Hmm. Yeah. The, part, the publisher seem, uh, seemingly wants to move all focus from the widely pan remaster to just release Grand Theft Auto 6 instead. Yeah, this, this really hurts. This hurts my soul. Because here's the thing. This isn't... When they talk about, oh yeah, they don't want to make these remasters because of the poor reception to the trilogy uh, Definitive Edition. That was their fault. Not yeah, us. So this is cause... so this definitely sounds like it was worded very specifically to like some sort of shareholder or something because mm-hmm. this neglects all responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they didn't like it, so we're not gonna do it. And I was like, well, well you had an AI like re fucking do things and like <laughs> signs were wrong, so that's it's not like, on us. <laughs> it's on them for doing because here's the thing, when they announced it. Everyone was losing their goddamn mind. Everyone yes. was excited for yeah. it. We want the the idea of remakes for these classic games. That is something we find appealing. You just have to do it good. And then not only do they have to do it good, when they talk about, oh, yeah, we're not making these because people didn't like it. It sold well over their expectations it did despite well. all the so bad that was, also, that was also interesting. That's why I'm almost doubting this, although this is a very known leaker. So he has some credence behind it. But I was like... But it's sold well, so why do they care? Now, I know Rockstar is very... They're very... Ru- they're, yeah, like, they're kind of... I don't know. They always seem like they don't care. So, like, why mm. do you care about this, right? Like, they seem very uh, in a vacuum. Like, they make their things kind of in a vacuum. They make yeah, like their, they make, thing, yeah. Yeah, they make their stuff, and, like, they release it. You, you like it, you don't. They, they release it, you're going to buy it, right? Once it has mm-hmm. that R on it. You're probably buying the game. So I'm interested that they were like, oh, we didn't, people didn't like it. So we're not going to remake other games. Um, it just seems strange. Yeah. I will say for the case of these, because I feel like they were going to make these just to kind of make even more padding between now and GTA 6, because yeah. I think that's the big one. Yeah. I think they're just riding high on the GTA Online money and they said, fuck all these other projects. They probably had Red Dead Redemption 2 because that was a little bit of a passion project, probably. Um, there was, you know, a desire to make something like that. I don't know how much creative energy is in that studio anymore. I feel like the entire studio has been built around this live service and they do some cool stuff there. They, they make story missions. They brought back Franklin into the online mode. Like they're doing stuff, but like Red Dead Redemption one seems like such a slam dunk for a remake considering half that map is in Red Dead Redemption two. So it, that seems very obvious GTA four. I don't know. Why you would go back to that? I know that's a game that a lot of people love. And a lot of people it. Love for. <laughs> I, well, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, like, out of all of the Grand Theft Autos, like, let's go bowling. It, it's it's like, how do I say this? Outside of out of all the 3D Grand Theft Autos, GTA 4 is probably the lowest on the rung. Not out of like it being bad, but you think about like the classic trilogy from PS2, and GTA 4 feels like the awkward middle child because GTA 5 has been so such a hit that we've been playing it for a decade and a half now. And GTA 4 was, it feels like, you know, we talk about the PS, or I talk about the PS3 all the time and how it's kind of like the awkward middle child of the generations. GTA 4 is definitely representative of that with the very skatey, floaty driving controls, the kind of cover shooter, but we haven't figured out how to make it smooth yet because we didn't make Max Payne 3 yet. Yep. Like, it's very... Work needs to be done on GTA 4, so if they ever do come back to GTA 4, they got a lot of work to do on that one, so maybe it's best to just make your GTA 6 now, come back when you have more time, and specifically more passion to actually change that stuff and not just port it over like you tried to do with the original trilogy because it's not going to work. <laughs> People right. are going to hate that game now. Yeah, the Red Dead One, you could just bring that over, one to one, and it'd still be fun. <laughs> I want to fight you on Grand Theft Auto Four, but mm. I played it, I think, when I was eleven. So I can't even <laughs> pretend like I am even in the remote knowledge of my present gaming taste now. Like back then, also, I back then, off the top of your head, you remember the release date, two thousand eight. Eight. Yeah, we're on the fucking money together. So yep. yeah, two thousand eight. Yeah, did we have good examples of what you noted? Like, did we have good, did we have open world that had good driving and great stuff? Like, I feel like it was great for the time, but again, I was fucking like eleven or something. So like, I don't, I don't, I don't. I know. mean, I'm I'm thinking right now. I don't know if you had open world games with like 
Inqu- well, shit, Burnout Paradise came out in 2008. Right, but you didn't um, get out of your car and shoot true, people in the face. You didn't get out of your car. There there were examples, even on the PS2, there were examples, like even the old Grand Theft Auto games, like as long as you just moved the the uh, the gas and the brake to the trigger instead of X and square, like those drive fine. fine. You, you have yeah. enough control. It's that they had the Euphoria physics engine and it's a great engine for like watching bodies fall down. I follow a TikTok account right now that's just bodies falling over in Red Dead 2. Like it's it's awesome. <laughs> but really, like really quick, really quick. I, I yes. don't, and one of the reasons why I, I can't fight you on this is because I have not played the games that you're saying. So I'm like, uh, if it is not as good as the other ones, I don't fucking know. So I, I, I feel you stating that Grand Theft Auto 4 is that weird middle child because I haven't played the other three. I know I like Grand Theft Auto 5 more than 4, but I have a little bit of a soft spot for 4 only because it was my first one. Yeah, it, it's a lot of people have nostalgia because it was a lot of people's first Grand Theft Auto game, their first like next gen. Oh my god, this big epic! Yeah. But like you go back to it now, like it's Steam Deck compatible and all this stuff. You try to go back to it now, it is it feels its age. Yeah. So yeah, that's the main thing of it. But eh, they could do something to it. Well said. Really quick, um, I'm almost tired of talking about this, but I have not talked about this with you, so it makes me mm. a little interested. Grand Theft Auto Six. What is what is the what's the feel? You know, you lick your finger. Where's the wind blowing? <laughs> Where's the wind All blowing? Right. That's what everyone wants to know. When's Grand Theft Auto 6 come out? I'm feeling this thing isn't coming out for a while. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing doesn't come out. Like, similarly to how Grand Theft Auto 5 came out right at the end of the PlayStation 3 360 generation. Right there with you. I wouldn't be surprised if GTA 6 came out right around that time for PS5 and Xbox Series. Um, as far as what they're doing, I think they're. I think what a lot of us want, a lot of the people who haven't been keeping up with GTA Online, all of us just want a really cool campaign. Yeah. Uh, things that I've been wanting from GTA for a long time. Give me a female protagonist. It's some somewhere she she can be one of three, or she can be like you know the only girl. Like I want. I feel like these are especially GTA Five was a very male centric storyline. It was yeah. about toxic masculinity in a lot of ways, uh, and similarly with GTA Four, I, I feel like too. I would love it now that uh, one of the Hauser brothers is out. That Hauser brother was one of the main writers for a lot of the Rockstar games. Right now, now that he's out, get some new blood in here. Get some different writers. Get some new perspectives in here. Make a GTA game that isn't when I say miserable to play, like thematically. Like I did not like GTA Five story because really? it was just it was a bunch of shitty dudes being shitty all the time. That that's the story, right? Like that that I get it. I get no. <laughs> it I is the story. It. It's almost yeah. like what people said about. I'll try not to spoil it, and I'm not. I don't think I am. But it's like what people said about Last of Us Part Two. Like once oh, you get yeah, to a very yeah. specific part, either you love that they did that, me, or you mm-hmm. fucking hate that they do that. Like a lot of people who don't like that game, like mm-hmm. oh, I hate this character. So why do I want to do X and Y? And I'm like, but isn't? But that's why games are so fucking good, dude. Like because it's making you do shit, and you have to be a part of it, and you have to initiate. It. Now I'm not over here defending Grand Theft Auto Five. Been a long time since I played it. The story was. <laughs> I remember the story was like okay. I think like I yeah. I'm not even gonna say the story. It. I'm not gonna say the story was bad. It's just if you're gonna if I'm gonna play a game for like what fifty Ooh, hours, yeah, a 50, long ass game. Yeah, I don't. Like that. Like tre- someone like Trevor Phillips is fun to play as for a couple hours, but I have to I keep coming weird. back to the son of a bitch for all this time, seeing all these fucking atrocities he's doing. It stops being funny at a certain point. Yeah, it's a great it's a great idea as far as script writing for a great the final character, someone you know is going to go on a rampage anyway. But like, I would love for them to introduce new characters. I know the rumor is Vice City they're going back to for GTA. So 6. many different rumors. I've just refused to believe any of it. I, I like I said, I want them to be somewhere completely new. I Me said too. Atlanta earlier. Atlanta. Because oh, I feel like that would be so right for so a GTA good. type story. Yes. Um, and plus, you know, female protagonists that would fit in Atlanta. <laughs> like you could do so much more with a female protagonist in an Atlanta setting than you could with a male protagonist, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I think that would be really interesting. Or just go somewhere we haven't seen before. You, you could go back to London for all I care. I think that would be interesting. Actually, that might be a valid thing to do because they've talked about how it's hard to make a GTA game when parody is real life at this point. So, <laughs> like, why not go to the UK? And I know there's some shit going on in the UK right now, too. But, like, why don't you go over there and have some commentary there to, like, spice it up so you don't have to just regurgitate all the things we've been seeing on Saturday Night Live for the last five years? Oh, so. God. I always love that meme of um, 
Breaking Bad making vows, and it's and it's SNL making a uh, one of the most terrible skits ever <laughs> like, like, <laughs> about a recent uh, event. That's so good. I, I will say SNL is in their bag every now and then, but like for the most part, I don't feel the need to keep up with any of it. I don't either, but I, I just it's a funny meme. I don't even know if it's funny. I, I haven't watched it. <laughs> in, I haven't watched it in years. It's just uh, the meme is funny, so I'm like, oh, that's funny. Every now and then they'll get someone on or they'll have a good skit that goes viral. And I'm like, all right, you deserve to exist for now. <laughs> My judgment hammer will see you another day, sir. <laughs> exactly. Uh, to yeah. very quickly summarize my points of grand final six yeah i believe yeah everything you said i pretty much believe i'd love atlanta i don't think it's gonna happen i i just i just don't think that's gonna happen but it'd be awesome this is telling though this will say can can they live without a house brother we'll see will grand the grand the final five be inherently into the single player we'll have to see we don't know will it be a division-esque story where like Yes, you're by yourself, but you are in a world encapsulated oh, by other players. It's gonna kill me. No one wants that, but everyone wants that. If you understand what I mean, not, not, none of us critics who want single player games want it, but the person who they want to make the game for probably does. So yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see. I pray they take the Red Dead Two route, make a single player game, make an online mode, go make your millions of dollars. Apparently, this budget, if the rumors were uh, true, is five hundred million dollars so just for reference that's around double the budget almost triple of something like god of war god of war i believe is about two to three hundred million dollars something like that so just just for reference everyone by the way they also project to make a billion dollars in the first day yeah well (laughs) we'll see we'll see uh fittingly nba 2k23's cover athlete will be michael jordan Last seen on the cover in 2015 in a special edition of NBA 2K16, this title is, uh, and this title being uh, seen as one of the best in the long-running basketball games, has gotten reinvigorated a lot of fans for this year's release. One of the best things about that year's release was that the Jordan Challenges, those will also see a return, featuring moments from Jordan's NBA career as well as his uh, playtime in Team USA, 10 of them being rebuilt and the other five will be in its own game mode. Another interesting thing lies in the Championship Edition of the game, now, no price tag is attached to this, expected to be high, but it will include a year of NBA League Pass. By the way, that's $50 by itself, so that's pretty expensive. I just thought that was cool that I was in the game. Now, pretty normally, neat. this would not be a news story at all. Normally, this would be either a date update or a rapid fire. Um, oh, and uh, very quick, uh, the WNBA edition will feature Deanna Taurasi and sue bird sorry almost forgot thank you i was gonna bring that up but yeah you got it yeah yeah. very cool i uh like i said i I worked for gamestop and that was always cool that they did like all the editions and then they would have the woman edition too that's that's just really cool but uh back to what i was saying normally this is date update rapid fire very quickly the reason i'm bringing this up is 2k11 specifically is my favorite nba so if this is anywhere close to that i'm fucking ready hmm why well, that was the one that featured like is that the spike lee story mode no that is no, no that's 2016 no, that's, I yeah 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 that's that should okay. be 2016 i didn't play that i heard it was bad so i didn't play that. but i still um, want to because it's bad <laughs> i do a little too um uh, uh do, and that reminds me of the funny clip someone took of i think last year's nba where you find jake from state farm you remember that yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could talk to him and you get his like stuff and i'm like what the and they're like having they have an active advertisement in the campaign of the game is one of the craziest things i've ever seen in my life but uh if it's anything like uh, 2k11 i remember playing that on 360 and enjoying it a lot with the jordan challenges and all these things i loved that so if that is anywhere close to this i loved also collecting um the sneakers i don't know if you remember that from from that oh, year but you you collected wow. jordan sneakers by doing specific things so huh. and it was fucking so cool like i i i may i'm not a sneaker head i i i admire from afar because i'm not rich so i'm not buying these sneakers <laughs> but, but like I, from afar i'm like god those are so nice i wish i could get them that's another thing with that where like you get to like look through them all and you can uh, once you unlock them i believe you can uh, put them on your player and things and, and it's very cool and hopefully they capture the essence of nba 2k11 because it has been a while since i've fallen in love with an nba i could say yeah. the same as madden too so i don't really have too much hopes but I wanted to cover it anyways. I and also I wanted to ask, what is your relationship with sports games? It's something we rarely talk about on the show. My favorite sports game of all time is probably Knockout City. 
<laughs> so that's where we're at when it comes to sports games. I will say for NBA 2K, that's just a franchise that has been on the periphery of my vision for a while just because like like the Spike Lee story mode I'm interested to play just because like Spike Lee wrote a video game like what the fuck's up with that or maybe consulted or just worked on one I got to see what's up with that and I or have he that wrote the, plus. and then they said hey he wrote he wrote it he wrote, he wrote. <laughs> <laughs> god um yeah I don't know his involvement entirely on that I but, either, but I I, I want to see what's up with that and my little brother plays all the time, so I'm aware of it from there. Yeah. Uh, I got a lot of like some friends, family members that play it. Um, but as far as sports games in general go, I am not like I go to video games for an escape. I could pick up a basketball, and I did a lot growing up. Like this is it's like your- I, I don't talk about it too much, but like my dad has been a football coach for 25 years. Oh, um, that's very cool. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. And then my little brother. You. You didn't do anything. <laughs> No, I play. Well, my dad was my dad was a coach, but he was coaching me for half that time because ah. um, I played football up until eighth grade. I was playing basketball, track and field. I was in all the sports up until eighth grade. My little brother went to college off a scholarship for football, and my sister was big into basketball too. So, like, we we're a sports household. That's I'm funny. around sports all the fucking time. Yeah. Um, but like when I'm not around all that, I'm like, let me go and let me go do something I couldn't possibly do in real life. Let me life. shoot someone mm-hmm. in the face. Yeah. <laughs> May not always shoot someone in the face, but let me let me go live out a fantasy that may or may not be violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm kind of right there with you. It's been a long time since I've really sat down and played a sports game. Like I would play the Madden on and off. There were a couple Maddens I fell in love with. Um, I'm actually ex- ex- just excited because John Madden's on the cover this year. Um, yeah, just has a I'm nice remembrance. That. That's really nice. So I would like to do that. I will quickly say um, w- I should talk about it more only. Uh, because of one thing and when i worked at gamestop to bring it up again the nba release was bigger than any other release every year wow. so it is a huge franchise huge hmm. it's very big now it was it doesn't necessarily chop the charts and sales compared to something like of course call of duty and things like that but it always does incredibly well so it should yeah. be talked about more because it's just a, it's a big part of our gaming ecosystem something like mad and something like nba there's a reason they keep coming out because they keep making a lot of money well, it's 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 the same case of like, you know, people are going to talk about their Breaking Bads, their Stranger Things. Like people talk about TV shows, but you're not going to talk about the Super Bowl in the same breath, because right. despite it being the same medium and the same thing, it's going to appeal to a different market. And it's kind of a different thing entirely. So, yeah, point. respect to that. But eh, it is what it is. <laughs> well, second might be looking at uh, developing some live action TVs and movies for their IPs. IGN received an exclusive detailing such the thing that they might be venturing into the TV and movie scene. Not too much is detailed, but we do have a, a quote from Toro Nakahara. I think I, I think that was pretty good. Sega is lead producer on the live action Sonic the Hedgehog movies and the Sonic Prime TV show for Netflix. So quick behind the scenes. When I saw that, I went, oh, Sonic Prime. It's an Amazon Prime show. So I <laughs> looked it up. No, it's called Sonic Prime, and it is a TV show for Netflix. I was very fucking confused for a little bit. But, um, (laughs) yeah, I didn't know this existed, so there's a TV show coming, and it's called Prime, and it's coming to Netflix. Cool. Yeah, it's animated. They showed off a clip of it, like, two, three weeks ago. Does it look good? It looks like a Sonic animated show. It tells me everything I need to know. Quote, (laughs) Atlas's worlds are filled with high drama, cutting edge style, and compelling characters. Stories like those from the Persona franchise really resonate with our fans, and we see an opportunity to expand lore like no one has seen or played before. End quote. Dude talks like a fucking riddle. Um, (laughs) Now, there are not too many franchises to mention that atlas sorry I, I wrote second for some reason could potentially make a movie or a show on but let's name some likely ones persona catherine tokyo mirage sessions odin sphere dragon's crown 13 sentinels aegis rim and there's way too many to fully announce but i wanted to quickly name a couple it's pretty obvious persona is probably the first thing up on this it's the easiest thing to convert into a show um certainly Kat- catherine another one could be even a movie with that one I am not a huge fan of making these things into TV shows, although it seems very lucrative, especially when you're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Um, any of this resonate with you now? I, I don't know too much. And this is why I love making shows about you. I barely know you. So I don't know. <laughs> do you like the Sonic movies? Is this something that excites you at all? I'm never almost I'm like a broken record on this show. Whenever there's a TV show movie thing and I'm like, cool. I just I like games, though. So I'm not really yeah. I never really get excited. 
I am proven a liar in a few specific things. Castlevania, the Netflix show, is one of the best animated shows I have ever seen. So Ooh. there's a couple things uh, How that, are, that are outliers. But aside from that, what are, what are you stand at, what's standing on this? Does this excite you? Do you care at all? It definitely makes me raise an eyebrow or two in a good way. Mm, um, I... I have been, yeah, like The Rock, I guess. Um, I have been on record saying that I like the Sonic movies. Uh, I thought the first one was surprisingly good. And the second one, it's, it's movies that like you don't have to see, mm. but it's a lot of fun if you watch them. Like the second one, I was out there cheering and stuff. As someone who has grown up with Sonic, but hasn't grown, like Sonic has been there my entire childhood, but I haven't been looking for him. I ain't been playing the games, but like I'll go get my hair cut at Saturday morning and it'll be on four kids TV, the animated cartoon. So like I know a lot about Sonic just by osmosis and watching the movies. It's like, oh shit, they they made that? They did this? And the second movie especially, it's like they know. The second movie kind of knew that Sonic is kind of a meme. So like there were a lot of meme moments in the second movie where I'm like, you got Shamar Moore in this movie doing what? <laughs> okay. And like Shamar Moore is a whole like if, if you don't know, he's an actor for my criminal minds and SWAT, and he was in Tyler Perry's first feature film. Um, he's a very easily memeable guy. So when he, he was in this movie, I'm like, why is he here? It's hilarious that he's even here. Uh anyway, long story short, I like the Sonic movies for this news specifically. Uh I played a decent chunk of Persona 5, so Getting the Persona games into movies, I think that would be super interesting. I'd be, I'd probably watch that. Um, I find those stories interesting enough uh, to where I think if you adapt them into live action, that would be worth it. Uh, Aegis Rim, uh, what is it? God, Th I just said it. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim? There Thank you. Yeah. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Um, that game, now I haven't played it, but I, I, I listened to Bless pretty much spoiled the whole thing on a kind of funny post show on one of the podcasts okay and i listened to it because i was like i'm probably not gonna play this game right. that game sounds buck fucking wild Whoa. I, in a good I would, way or in an anime way where it's like they're kind of a little weird both oh, okay <laughs> in an anime way where it's super weird and like okay i don't know about that but also in a way that's like that's super fascinating and super interesting um so like in a okay. near automata type of way i'll say that if if anyone's ever okay. played near automata okay it's like Maybe not in a way where it's like playing with the medium of video games, but it's going to crazy, insane links narratively to do some wild shit. I would, if they put, made that into a movie, I'd be very excited for that because I don't know if I want to play a 30 hour game for that story, especially when it's not like the type of gameplay I care about. But adapt that story into a movie or even a TV show, I might get behind that because that's a really fucking intriguing story. Um, but yeah, they have some decent IPs here. Catherine, I don't know about that because Catherine. It leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth because the game itself is okay, it's fine, but then like they added another Catherine that's supposed to be like very heavily hinted to be like a trans character, yeah. And they don't treat her horribly, but they treat her in a very weird way that is saying some very weird things about the trans community <laughs> if you read into it. Yeah, so, Japan, like, Japan has a very interesting relationship with LGBT. Yeah people in general so yeah i think we see that a lot i believe in a, a lot in the games persona is not a, a game that escapes that either so i mm -hmm. think that's just something with their culture so uh, that's something almost unfortunately not to expect but um and i'm not uh <laughs> not trying to them. pigeonhole not, anybody yeah, yeah. yeah i'm not forgiving them for it it's a little weird but especially in persona it's fucking out of nowhere but uh <laughs> but yeah that seems that seems to be something just they do for culture. I think they think it's funny when men dress as women because I, I, I think they do that in like yeah reality shows. I've seen that before where like that's just that's just funny and that's the thing about culture is like it's hard to like understand what's funny about that, but it, they find it funny. Yeah, I, I mean, if they're adapting it in the same way they're doing with Sonic, it's not like they got an entirely Japanese team to make those movies. Right. I feel like you can bring you can bring a persona over, and I'm not saying they're going to turn it into Euphoria, but they could make that because <laughs> that would be fucking wild. God, Jesus Christ! Could you imagine Dude. this gratuitous nudity? But I have a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, but you have a Pokemon. Yeah. 
Good they're God. trying to forget that everyone is 16. Like, ah, stop! <laughs> oh, <all> God. 21! <laughs> yeah, that's... It's the opposite of the... What is it? The High School uh, Musical, the Musical, yeah. the Series thing? Yes. Where in my head, I'm like, oh, they're all 21. And then you look up, it's like, oh, no, half of them are 16. Nope. Um, they're all really yeah, 16. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. Um, but yeah, they could definitely bring that over to America and have our lens applied to it so it's right. not... Yeah. including those maybe problematic cultural ele- cultural elements but Correct. uh yeah i'd be interested to see what they do it's uh somewhat promising not super excited but like i could you could interest me you could interest me and very quickly we aren't forgetting i know persona has animated things but this is yes. a very yeah. specific situation with making movies and tv shows whereas those are almost like retellings of the games kind of yeah live action stuff yeah correct that's the news for the week. Let's get into date updates very quickly. Uh, let's start with Game Pass. Reminder, we read off everything that comes to the services that you are paying for. For instance, Game Pass, PlayStation Plus, and things. So this is everything coming to your Game Pass subscription in the coming weeks. Available as of recording. This is a, a launch day one on Game Pass. It's called Last Call BBS. Only on PC. It's an ID at Xbox title. Uh, I only read things I'm interested in. I'm reading this one. Boot up your Z5 Power Lance and dial into Last Call BBS. Mm. The last game from Zachtronics. The bar keeps loaded up his retro computer with a full set of puzzle games for you to download and play. No need to worry about copy protection. They're all fully cracked and ready to enjoy. Interesting. Hmm. I have no clue what that is, but sounds interesting <laughs> yeah i don't know uh, i'm sure some old man's like ha, 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 oh that was a great joke i don't know what the fuck i just read so yakuza zero you all know what that is cloud console and pc yakuza kiwami cloud console and pc and yakuza kiwami 2 cloud console and pc this is a uh, stupendous occasion for people who love yakuza or want to get in their franchise i believe right now every single yakuza game is available on game pass you that can go right now true. and play every single Yakuza game if you'd like. That is like a hundred plus hours. Go have fun. For a hundred? <laughs> That's well like over three. That? Really? Because like each game is probably like 30 or so, and there's Fuck. seven games. Really? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, oh. like it's insane. You could play just Yakuza games for the rest of the year if you wanted to. Jesus. And then add on judgment for next year. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon to Gamepad. Uh, yeah. This would technically be live as you're listening to this as well. DJ Max, respective V, Cloud Console and PC. It's an ID at Xbox. July 7th. Stop me, by the way, if you want to uh, uh, touch on something, Emmett. Match okay. point Tennis Championships, Cloud Console and PC, ID at Xbox, July 7th. Also available day one in Game Pass. Road 96, Cloud Console and PC, this July one. 7th. On this risky road trip to the border, you'll meet incredible characters and discover their intertwined stories and secrets in an ever-evolving adventure. But every mile opens a choice to make. Your decisions will change your adventure, change the people you meet, and maybe even change the world. Why'd you stop yeah. this one, Emmett? Um, because I'm interested in this one. Uh, this is actually one I heard of the about first... This, right? Is this yeah. on something? This was on a showcase, it's, right? It's on. It's on Steam, or yeah, it's on Steam. But I think it got shown off in like a Nintendo Direct or something. I think it did. Um, but yeah, it's on Switch as well. It's on pretty much everything at this point. Right. Uh, I'm interested in this one because this is one of the first games over at VGU.TV. This is one of the first games that I was able to get us a code for, mm. um, where some other folks on the staff, they usually are the ones, you know, bringing in game codes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, someone actually reached out to offer Road 96, so we got review code for that, and uh, Graydon Webb, uh, our writer over there, Graydon Webb, he reviewed it for us, and he talked very highly of it. It was one of our favorite, we voted it as one of the best indie games of the year during our Game of the Year stuff, so uh, I will finally be checking it out. Uh, which is kind of sad because I bought it on Epic Game Store during their winter sale. Uh, but now that it's on a platform I actually want to investigate in, I will be playing it on Xbox. So. Hey, you could just say, like, oh, I supported them. There you go. Yeah, exactly. That, that was the I gave them you. my money. Exactly. Uh, this will be go. another one I'm immediately stopping on. Escape a Cat. Oh, and by the way, just really quick, I'll be checking that out, too. I'll download that um, tomorrow as soon as it goes live. Uh, I want to check that out. That sounds like a game for me. Escape Academy console and PC ID at Xbox July 14th, another day one on Game Pass. You've just arrived at Escape Academy, a school where promising students train to become the ultimate escapist. Play over a dozen masterfully handcrafted rooms designed by experienced experts in the field of real life escape rooms. This sounds just really Mm. fun. So I might try this out. I highly doubt I'll get super into it, but this is something I did want to try. Let me tell you, I've played... I like escape rooms a lot. I've been in a handful of escape rooms in real life. Always a blast. I've actually played. There's another game called 
Escape Simulator on Steam. Okay. I played that once or twice with a friend of mine, Nick, uh, who I'm actually going to a wedding thing for this this weekend. So Congrats, shout out Nick. To him. Are you out there, um, Nick? Yeah. You listening? Well, he gets married next year, but we're doing a bunch of events to get all the members. Congrats to, next so. year, Nick. You listening? You better be. <laughs> I will send him this clip. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, I love me some uh, escape games. I think they're not something I play all the time, but when there is one that I'm interested in and want to play, I'm always enjoying it. So, yeah, this is definitely what I'm going to check out. Uh, we'll see if I'm able to get co-op into it. We'll see if I play it alone or not. But it tingles the brain in a good way. I thought that was going somewhere else when you said that. <laughs> when, when It tingles the something else? <laughs> All right. Well, it depends on who I'm playing with. <laughs> let's, ooh, let's talk about the GOAT. My friend Peppa Pig, Cloud Console and PC, July 14th. You're damn right I'm reading this. Start a fun-filled <laughs> adventure with Peppa Pig. Create your character, ring the doorbell, and step into the TV show. Peppa suggests activities everywhere you go, from the museum to Potato City. Help find <laughs> Daddy Pig's glasses, follow forest tracks, splash in muddy puddles, and more. Every playtime is different. I had a little sister around the time Peppa Pig was pretty big, so I understand Peppa Pig. Jokes aside, this is a South Park situation where the game looks like the fucking TV show. This game yep. looks like Peppa Pig. So if you have a small little one or you just want to play Peppa Pig, no judgments here. Check this out. They might actually really like this. Again, this looks like the TV show. Like this, this is crazy. It's when really I, impressive. When I saw it, I was like, whoa, this is really good. Like I, I was ready mm -hmm. to dunk on it. And I was like, no, no, kudos. Yeah. Kudos. Also, shout out to Daddy Pig. That name sounds like a, a fucking Say it. Manhunt 2 boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, overwhelmed. Coming to PC Game Pass. ID at Xbox. July 14th. Paul Patrol the Movie Adventure City Calls Cloud Console and PC July 14th. I feel like some Xbox exec came up and was like, we don't have any ones for like my kids to play. Can you add some of those? And, and yeah. they're like, yes, yes, sir, we can. Honestly, we crack jokes, but like Netflix does the same thing. And yep. there's a whole Netflix kids now. So Xbox trying to get in that bag. I respect it. I get it. Power Wash Simulator Cloud Console and PC July 14th. Joke, this is all serious, what I'm about to say. Went over to my dad's the other day. Got in. was like, hey, what's up, dad? And he's playing... What was he playing? He's playing, like, some PS4 game. It might have been uh, Spider-Man. Because uh, he just got a PS5 recently, so he's going through all the PS4 games he's missed. Oh, yeah. wow, nice. And, I, and we're just talking. He's like, yeah. So, uh, And he grabs his Xbox, shows me what he's been playing. He goes over, and he's like, and I've been addicted to Lawnmower Simulator. So, like, dude, like, <laughs> people are... People love these things. Like, we joke around. People actually like this stuff. So, like... Power Wall Simulator, I highly, highly, highly bet is going to be very popular. I am going to play this game. Power Wall Simulator. I am, I'm not excited for it, but I'm very interested. Like, Power Washing as just an activity looks fun, looks great. I really if want I just a do that washer. for a whole game. I'm glad, we're with, yeah. I'm glad you're with me on this because I've always wanted one. Because, and I've, everyone's going to make fun of me now. I follow r slash power washing porn. I think it's what it's called. Oh, hell right? yeah. <laughs> Dude, so satisfying when oh. you're seeing a nice a nice driveway slowly being... Oh, there's nothing oh. better. Nothing it better. It gives you the positive tingles. It gives you it's, positive it, tingles. It, it tingles me. Yes, it does. Good job. <laughs> so this yeah, is, I'm playing this day one. This is also an available on day one with Game Pass. Yes, indeed. All right, we're going to quickly go, and this is uh, also available, House Flipper, Cloud Console, and PC. Now, this is everything leaving July 15th. Now, remember, these are all going to be gone from the server. So either A, you finish up the game that you're currently playing and finish the game, or B, if you'd like to keep it, you will save 20% off the game. So make sure you get your savings before it leaves. They are the following. Atomic Crops, Cloud Console, and PC. Carry On. Carry On. Cloud console. Play Carrion. Play Carrion. It's great. Okay, play Carrion. You have, as of recording, about 10 days. A little less. It's like two hours long. Just play it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, this is the monster game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted game. to play this. I might actually do that now. Yes, indeed. Children of Morta, Cloud Console and PC. Chris Tales, very good game. Cloud Console and PC. Lethal League Blaze, Cloud Console and PC. Lethal League Blaze sounds like uh trying to be um Oh my god, I had it in like I, uh, Rocket League? No. Uh NFL Blitz. You remember that? Oh my god. Yeah. That, that sounds like, <laughs> like if you read me Lethal League Blaze, I'm like, oh, are they trying to be like NFL Blitz or something? Like that's exactly what it comes into my mind 
when I see that. That is not at all what I thought of. Is that it looks like it's a four player b- brawler of some sort? Well, I really when, don't when know I hear league, I'm thinking a sport, you know? That's, yeah, well, why. there's a ball involved, so maybe it's like a side scrolling soccer thing, but it has the art style of like Jet Set Radio. It's weird, so I guess investigate it if you'd like in the next two weeks. Achievers <laughs> week. sometimes make fun of me because I always say, like, if it's unique, I like it, so like. They fuck with me with it, but <laughs> this is if it, hey, it's unique. I go enjoy it. Yes, indeed. Valkyria Elysium got a date and a trailer today. If you'd like to go check it out, it's coming PS4, PS5, and Steam on September 29th, 2022. Of course, I'm very excited for this one. This looks very good. I will be trying it out. Hopefully, it does not suck. Dio Field Chronicle announced over the weekend a release date for the game and a demo. The demo set to launch August 10th. And releases on PS4 and PS5 on September 22nd, 2022. This uh, just randomly was dropped, I want to say, on Twitter. Maybe it's a blog post or something. Lollipop Chainsaw is getting a remaster next year. Yay! Cool. Excited for that. Yeah, no one, did, no, none of the top people are involved. Of course, James Gunn is not involved. And the creative director, I want to say, is not involved or something. But it's yeah. a remaster. Uh, they will not have the original uh, soundtrack, uh, of course, for licensing reasons. Uh, this is what I thought I got for you, but I'm mean, already new. This is just for <laughs> Emmett. THQ announced that Biomutant will be coming to PS5 and Xbox Series S and X on September 6th yeah. with a host of updates. Yeah, and you can transfer your save to the new version. Very excited about that. That's very cool. I did not see that. Thank you for uh, telling us. Forspoken, unsurprisingly, was delayed to January 24th, 2023, near mere minutes after God of War. Not saying that's the reason, because it was literally minutes. So this was probably already planned, but a little weird. Eh, it was sandwiched between Last of Us I, Remake and God of War. I think so. they said break glass in case of anything else, because like they were already yep. in Danger territory. And as soon as God of War, they were like, ah! <laughs> like, yep. like delay it. <laughs> oh, uh, really quickly, because I make fun of it at all. So I'm curious if you're positive at all on this. Forspoken, what what do you think? Um, there's potential there. I, I like I the I like the core narrative conceit. I like that Amy Henning and Gary Witta yep. both have, are behind the story somewhat. I like some of the cast. I like some of the parkour gameplay I see. I still don't know what the combat is. I still don't know nope. so much about this game to make me confident in it. We've only um, seen like the dev uh, mode ish kind of thing where like she yeah. was just standing there and moving water or something. And I was like, wow, you guys don't even have like a playable segment you can show us. This is just mm-hmm. like a dev room you made to show this off. Yeah, I, I would like to think that maybe we'll get some type of a demo come like Game Awards time or maybe even opening night live or something. I want to see more of this game to me make me know what it is. But, you know, I'm holding out a little bit of hope, but I'm not like super hype. Me either. Gwent's Rogue Mage was announced literally moments before this podcast and is launching P- on PC, iOS and Android July 7th for ten dollars. It is interesting. So it's technically it said it's a prequel. Sorry, it is a prequel single player <laughs> card based rogue like lot of things there but on the surface it seems cool and if you remember gwent is of course set in the witcher universe so if you like the witcher you might get some cool story stuff i might try this out i don't know depends on what they mean by card like rogue like cuz i'm like mm-hmm. i guarantee you i will not i have enough card based rogue likes with slay the spire which is one played, of my I've, favorite games i haven't played any of them but <sighs> i keep trying to play slay the spire cuz i know you're a slay the spire guy so i'm like i need to play this because Emmett keeps saying it's good dude slay it's it's crack i didn't i didn't think that i liked uh card games either but slay the spire it's definitely like it's, it's scratching that Risk of Rain 2 itch with even less friction of gameplay. I just get the numbers. <laughs> like, I love it. <laughs> I get the numbers. Yeah, it's great. And that is the news for the week. That is everything that I have on this docket. Now, as a reminder, I end the show just like how I began it with a singular question posted at Emma Watkins Jr. But before I get into that, I have to quickly... To what have I been playing? Because I moved on way too quick to talk about. Yeah, what I, I was realized that. Originally. <laughs> I got super into the dog because we had a good transition, so I did not bring it up. So I'll bring it up now because it's pretty lengthy, and I didn't want to break the show up midway through to talk about me. So I have been playing. I'm gonna save the one that you're gonna be like, "What the fuck?" for last. But I finished the quarry. Like I said, we're gonna do a spoiler cast very soon. The quarry. 
Uh, I'll keep full thoughts for the show. I don't think I'm going to say anything different if you've listened to anyone else about this game. Uh, it starts off very strong, and I want to say I have a pretty deep arc with the game. So, sorry, arch. So an arch with the game. So peaks and then kind of just slowly tampers out. I would mm. be very curious what happened technically with this game because in some parts, uh, I'm playing on my OLED TV. Emmett, shit you not. Some parts, best game I've ever seen in my entire life. There is uh, a, spe- a specific bonfire scene that I looked over to my wife and I'm like, I'm not crazy, right? This looks real. And <laughs> she's like, no, it does. It's weird. It's weird. Like it, it looks incredibly good. Then mm. there's parts that look terrible and I don't know why. So I'm interested because apparently this was a meant to be a city exclusive actually. And that yeah. deal fell apart. So maybe they had to just release the game and not fix it or something. Cause it seems like half the game is amazing. And the other half of the game was like, ship it. Like just, we have to ship this. So yeah. I mean, 2k published it. So like money was involved <laughs> still. Yeah. But what, but then what's the explanation? Cause why is some, so it's breathtakingly amazing. And then other things I'm like, bro, what happened? Like there's some characters that's face or in some scenes don't work. There's like some mocap mm. that looks amazing. Other characters just like, their cheeks are oddly formed, so their mouth is moving, but their cheeks aren't correctly in form. Oh. Like, there's a couple things where it's just like, God, like, if you took, like, a couple more months, this probably could have been, been a, like, game of the year contender. But there's so many things, little things. There's a scene where uh, you fall f- fall through, like, um, like, a floor. And, bro, when you fall, they shoot up dust and wood chips up like a fucking cartoon and it looks terrible and i'm like dude what <laughs> like who who greenlit this water uh, effects are really bad too like there's a lot of mm. little things that i'm like why what like what happened i'm i'm, I'm very it's just, i don't know there's so many I mean, little things for super massive they be, they are making games at such a clip that no one else is and yeah. it's a little concerning yeah. like you know until dawn and hidden agenda came out very quickly after each other all the all the uh, dark pictures anthology games came out and were like dark pictures anthology here we go exactly like bop, 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 bop. like it's it's honestly rivaling like insomniac in the 2000s or 2010s where yeah, ratchet and Ratchet and Clank, the original trilogy, came out one after the other, and then PS3, they were doing Resistance, then Ratchet, then Resistance, then Ratchet, <laughs> then, you know, all these Oculus games, and now we're doing mobile games, and now we're doing Facebook games with Autonauts and all this shit. Like, they are doing so much, and I feel like Super Massive is getting to that point, that or maybe the quality is falling because I, of it. I, but. I, I, I'm i so curious. I would love to know. We're never going to, probably. But I would love to know, like, there's. it's clear that they were like, ship this. And also, quick note, it's not because of the length, because I know a bunch of people will be that. Because I, I, I would pay $70 for around a 10-hour 10, 10, 10 game. That's not the problem. This game is not yeah. $70. This game is nowhere close. 50 40 perfect. Send it. 70 is egregious for this. Egregious for the things yeah. that's wrong with it. That is, like... In another world, like you guys, no, <laughs> no, this would have been. I would have been insta buy fifty bucks. Like, go have fun. If you can't play with a significant other, that's what I did. I played with my wife. We had a great time. A little spooky. Um, I won't spoil yeah. what it's about. I almost fucking did, like nonchalantly. Don't know why. Sorry, <laughs> I caught myself at least. But good on you because I wouldn't have known. <laughs> yeah. So go enjoy the game if you'd like to. But it, I implore you, if you can, try to wait for a sale. Um. Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, oh. oh, what the fuck? Yeah, so that's what I was uh, gonna wait on. So I, so uh, huh. I was, uh, so this is a game came out broken to all hell. I refused to play it in its current situation. I was like, I'll see you guys when you launch a next a gen edition. I'm not playing this. And when the next gen edition came around, um, not uh, I want to say around February. Because mm-hmm. it was delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed because of all the shit that went happened in that studio. Got hacked, a yes, yes. bunch of nonsense happened, script was messed up. Too much to name. A lot of things happened. But I finally went back to the game after really never really starting. I got to about level 7-ish. Level 5, mm-hmm. somewhere around there. Basically, I, I completed the intro for people who have played the game. It's been two years, so I'll kind of, you, you know Keanu Reeves is in it. You get the Keanu Reeves character in a specific way. I did that part and I basically stopped. 
Okay. Yeah. And I went back to Cyberpunk to see if I wanted to play it, and I fall in love is way too strong, but I am enjoying it a good bit. Mm. I've played almost this nonstop. I'm enjoying surprisingly the gunplay. It's very nice, huh. and the uh blades are really fun. So I have two things that I love right now. Eh, really three things. So anything with that's a handgun feels really good to shoot. Mm. Um. I'm not a big, I'm not into the snipers or anything, but I have two standouts. So if you guys know what the Mantis blades are, these are these long oh, like blades arm things that, pop out. that come out of your hands and you can murder people with them. It's the coolest thing ever. And you yeah. just destroy people. You stab them, like lift them in the air like Wolverine. Cool. Awesome. There's Fucking also weird. a thing called a smart shotgun. So it's a double barrel shotgun with a computer on it. And when you shoot it, micro missiles come out like this sit in the air for a second and then like shoot all at one person at once and it is oh. incredibly satisfying <laughs> i also enjoy the quick hack system to the game where i can hack people's like computer minds and like make them blow up i have a thing that makes them kill themselves that's fucked up but it's really cool um <laughs> i'm enjoying the game now i will say i i was talking with alex uh, behind the scenes and i was because he's really happy because he enjoyed the game at launch like he he understood like you know it's buggy as fuck but he liked it yeah and he was like oh you know do you like do you can you finally say like it's a good game and you like it and i was like yeah i can finally say that two years after the launch so yeah sure i'll say that <laughs> it's a good game after almost two years after its launch yeah i'll say that so congrats i guess <laughs> uh you after should, w you which is basically uh, just an l yeah yes so <laughs> yeah take delay it for a year and a half and it would have been ready cool yeah um and i and i will say still fucking buggy is all hell it, it is still pretty bad not not nearly as bad but i had a very pivotal scene that was completely ruined by a bug so i won't spoil it but there's i have a hostage and i have a friend with me and the uh the uh the the people that i got the hostage from break in but mm. i guess it didn't load properly so my friend is T posed just in the middle while people are running in. There's a credible action scene. <laughs> Nothing played, and I'm I'm just standing there, and I like fall down or something. All right, my character got <laughs> away somehow, but so distracting just seeing and just nothing <laughs> happening, imagine. and and like just a bunch of people shooting, and I was like, cool. Good I God. I would love to have seen what happened in that scene because <laughs> uh, I don't know <laughs> what it was, but uh. good game, but jeez like that is that's something we're going to be talking about for a long time is 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 how bumbled that was yeah plus it's it's supposed to still be good dlc too so yep i was uh did you see the leak oh yeah the entire script of the dlc got leaked yeah yeah i'm i'm not gonna look that up because i actually did buy uh i also bought cyberpunk once it hit ten dollars at best buy i said well first i said oh i'm gonna buy this and then i thought Wait, how much is the trade-in value at GameStop? So I bought four <laughs> copies and made a couple dollars. <laughs> Yo, that is that is something I never faulted anyone. I was like, bro, like mm-hmm. that's their system. Why, why do you like people would be like, hey, would you let me? I'm like, bro, I don't give a fuck. What are you talking about? Yeah, like, don't make it obvious because I'll get in trouble. But do what you want, man. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. But um, but yeah, I uh, I'm still interested to go back to it. It seems like the type of game that I would like thematically because I've seen video. I've had the whole game spoiled for me. I've seen video essays, blah blah blah, all this stuff. Um, so I'm not necessarily interested in it for the story because thematically it seems like it's not gonna be the craziest thing I've ever nah, seen. Um, honestly, the best things are the side missions. I played an entire hmm. mission that is evolving around an ex detective's nephew. That was captured by a crazy serial killer that is in the oh. hospital that is uh, comatose because he got shot. So we have to steal his dreams, watch his dreams, and discover where the nephew is. Fucking wild wow. mission. It was awesome, and it's super dark. I did not think Cyberpunk got this dark. That was Ooh. a fucked up mission. Sounds like a lot of fun. I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you even uh, want to watch a playthrough of it, like, if you don't want to play the game, the mission, but it was, I was like, wow, this is like, you brought it up earlier. This is like a Criminal Minds episode. Like, I'm yeah. with this detective and we're finding this serial, I don't know if he's a killer or a rapist. I don't know what he was doing to the kids, but it was fucked up. Um, So, like yeah whew, that was really good though that that was like i was on the edge of my hmm. seat like i gotta figure out what's going on here 
Interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to get around to it at some point, but considering what game it is and all the other games about to come out, it's not at the top of the list. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah. Now, back to what I was saying. We end the show just like we began it with a single little question that I pose to Emmett. Now, of course, this is what's cute. Now, this isn't just for Emmett. This is for you at home. You leave in the comments. Let us know what you've been playing or tweet at either I at EVM9000 or at EJSponge61. Correct. <laughs> gotcha, Get on you. Got you, buddy. And you, of course, answer the question, what's queued up? Now, this could be, of course, a game, a TV show, a podcast, a movie, a comic book, maybe a book that you've been mm. wanting to watch. What's gonna, what do you have queued up for the weekend, damn it? Here's what I'm planning on doing. So first off, I put up a Twitter poll a while back. And by a while back, I mean maybe half a week I ago. I answered this, <laughs> um, I remember. Yes, uh, where I said, hey, I got a game that I'm really excited for. And it's coming today, but what game should I check off my list so I can justify playing the new thing? Um, everyone voted Kirby Forgotten Land, and as I talked about earlier... I also did. Yeah, well, good on you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little salty because I also had Legend of K on there because I'm, like, really close to the end of Legend of K. So, but everyone was like, that Kirby, was, let's play that. So I had no context to what was going on. I yeah. literally went... I think he, I've just assumed, like, maybe he, I think he's further along in Kirby. I'll say Kirby. So hopefully he has enough time to finish something else. Seems like I was wrong mm. in that um, kind of yeah. guess. But that was my guess. I was like, oh, I want to, I'll say Kirby because I want him to beat it quickly and go to something else. Yeah. Actually, in, in all seriousness, Kirby might have ended up being shorter because Legend of K, I only had like two more levels left in it. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are... Really quick. Are you saying Legend of K, like the letter? Like K A Y, oh K A Y, oh yeah, oh, 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 oh. okay, yeah, what old school. The, what is this? I don't. I've never it's heard a, of this. It's a PS2 game. This is a remaster of the PS2 game for their anniversary. Uh, it's a THQ Nordic joint, so you can assume what you're getting there. Yep. Um, but Thank it's you. cute little animal platformer, kung okay. fu running around. It's it's, it's an Emmett game. That sounds Emmett. fucking Emmett as shit. Everything. Oh, you said. it's it's an Emmett game. We just talked about Bio Mutant. You, I, I would not be surprised if it was you know same DNA being brought over. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, I was playing that, and I I might go back to that, but in that original tweet where I said, hey, I got this new game, what should I play to check off the list first? Now that I've beaten Kirby, I'm going to that game I just bought. And oh. I do not have it easily accessible, oh, so I'm okay. not going to go... F I, I could scroll through my whole shelf here, but I'm not going to do all that right now. Right. Um, all I'm going to say is I have a date with Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did it ladies and gentlemen yeah. he did it i didn't think you were going to You're, you said you're gonna wait for a really good sale you must have found nah. it well uh gamefly had stranger paradise on sale for i want to say 30 bucks that's not bad and so i said not bad that's, at all. it's 50 percent off i said yeah. fuck it let's go for it i'm sure in like two months it's gonna be on game pass but i'm like man i want to play this game now so i'm gonna hop into that i'm having you can a good always time. trade it in right and that means you spent less on it right go to your yeah. local game stop True. I, I don't know if I care that much about it. I think I'm just going to sit with the copy. I, I really either. wanted the steel I don't book, either. But, I always tell yeah. myself I'll do that. Never do. Like every mm -hmm. Switch game I have, like right here, I'm like, oh, I'll just buy them and trade them in. I never do that. Well, I, I use eBay more than I use GameStop, to be honest, because I'm oh, just... I mean, if you want to maximize your value, you definitely should. Yeah, exactly. Because every now and then you can get away with like jacking up the price a dollar or two on eBay, because if you were like, oh, I'm not looking at all the listings to see if this is a good deal. I'm yo, just getting the first one I see. Yo, I, I was in the eBay thing for a while. I you you can easily mess with people. Like I would I would sell <laughs> games for like three dollars off and they'd still buy. I'm like, you could have bought this game brand new at a store. So <laughs> hey, whatever. I don't know the situation. Take the game. Thanks for yeah. the sixty dollars back. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, I'll give it to you for a dollar. I don't really care about this game. Other times I'm like, yo, I need to eat this week. You're yeah. paying forty for this. <laughs> yeah. Fuck out of here. So yeah. So yeah, that's probably the next one I'm going towards. Uh, of course, I got a lot more Cookie Clicker in my life. I have gotten to the point in Cookie Clicker. I know, I know. I literally talked about this the first time I was around the show. Um, but I'm at the point in Cookie Clicker where they have like a prestige system where once you've earned enough cookies, you can wipe away all your progress for this run, but you earn like permanent chips that you can spend on upgrades that last throughout all your runs. I'm at the point where... At first, I was earning, like, every prestige, I was earning, like, maybe 100 chips. Then I bought all the 100 chip range upgrades. Now I'm getting, like, 1,000 pretty quickly. And now I can earn, like, 10,000 chips in a day. Like, God, I'm going to open up the game after we're done recording. I bet you I'll be at 50,000 chips. <laughs> so, Jesus. And it, I it get it instantly. Like, that whole slow grind of, like, all right, you got to click the cookie, earn some things. I get and it, bro. Like, 
hours to get to millions. Now I'm like, fuck it, man. I'm I'm at octillion cookies in less than an hour. So not in a exact same situation but i am understanding that grind mindset currently where normally i would say yeah i get it i'm playing destiny 2 i'm not however i am playing hearthstone in a specific ah. mode called mercenaries that i have just uh discovered my return to the game so i i used to play this this used to be the destiny so like i would come back and play this like in the background almost all the time back in i want to say like 2018 or something hmm. okay and i just i took a you know you burn out you kind of take a break for a long time so i did and i probably just started coming back to the game i want to say maybe a month ago but really playing hardcore only in the last week hmm. and i found this mercenary mode. do you know what this is at all uh not i know what hearthstone is but not this mode specifically so of course, Hearthstone, a card building game, if you don't know what the, what it is, you know, you buy packs, you get cards, etc. Simple to learn. But there's a mode that they added called Mercenaries. What it is, is you have, so in the normal mode, it's 30 cards in a deck. This one, it's six cards. Now, much less, oh. but what it is, it's a single player. You can play PvP, but it's a PvE game mode where you're six people are mercs, and you can level them up. They start at one, and they level up to level 30. They, they have three abilities attached to each Merc, and they also have three pieces of equipment that you can unlock for the Merc that increases one of their three abilities. So what I'm doing is playing this mode and having a great time because there's so many different compensations of Mercs you can have. There's so many different Mercs. There's uh, Mercs that play into each other. So like, for instance, right now, my strongest like set is a Dragon set. So I have like these five dragons that synergize with other dragons so as long as there's like a dragon on the board they'll boost off each other i have like a a a special one where like it gives my dragons like plus five attack there's a bunch of different things and it's really fun and it's you would love slay the spire oh my fucking god (laughs) (laughs) i do dude (laughs) i just thought of that again i'm like come on like i I saw you crack like in mid go you're just like wait <laughs> you're just describing the game so i'm almost positive this is probably some sort of rip off of another game or at least something that's supposed to be very similar i agree i do need to finally play these amazing games clearly you um can play it on your phone well you don't like phones you can play it well, anywhere no no no. so so junkie aside i i play games yeah. that are that makes sense so like hearthstone yeah i'm playing on the ipad oh, okay yeah i don't really play on the phone it's a little too small if i if i want some alone time i'll go i'll come in here and play on my uh pc for a little bit but it's it's very easy on the iPad. I'll let the wife watch something over there yeah. playing mercenaries. But uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely I definitely should play Slay the Spire. Uh, you're you're <laughs> correct. So 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 get so what is it? It's Slay the Spire two that I need to play. No, just there's only one game that oh, they've been only updating one. for like seven years. Oh, what yeah. did, what am I thinking of that had a two in it? Didn't you talk about it earlier in the show? My, my, thank, thank you, thank. Okay, I got yeah. the two mixed up. Sorry. So, Slay the Spire is the one I need to try out. Yeah, Slay the Spire you need to try out. I would say try out Risk of Rain two as well. But like, you're already halfway into liking Slay the Spire, so okay. try that. One. Okay, I'll try it out. I'll try it out. That was amazing, by the way. I'm, I'm sure everyone on YouTube enjoyed your <laughs> crack. Just like wait, wait. <laughs> but um, yeah. that yeah. So sticking with that, yeah. Hearthstone's really in the future. Finishing Cyberpunk, I um, I'm pretty sure I'm close to beating the game. I have maxed out the Street Cred, which is like a second XP system. That like unlocks items, I think, or something. So I, I'm, I, I max that out. I just need to beat the game whenever I want to. I just, I keep playing side stuff because it's so good. Yeah. Like that's the good stuff. Like when I play main missions, I'm like, this is how I figured the game would go. And I, when I play, side, oh, I like this. <laughs> yeah, when I play the side stuff, I'm like, wow, these characters are super interesting. I liked the Pan Am storyline. Wild Ooh. sex scene wild i don't even know what that could mean bro <laughs> so, do you want me to describe this because i will i i think the shock might hit harder if i just see it okay so i, I plan on playing the game at some point okay. and you know i don't feel deprived i mean the uh, internet is a thing if i'm really thirsty on, pa- <laughs> on pa- I mean, <laughs> that's amazing on paper I, i'm just gonna say it, like it was i'm watching this thing like what they don't what so okay kudos to a very um imaginative creative team i guess i'll say uh, oh, shout out, shout out to them because yeah because it is a very interesting way that they are having sex so we'll say that <laughs> but um yeah i'm enjoying the side stuff more than anything in cyberpunk i 
trying to think off the top of my head. I don't have anything that I'm pressing to get to. Like I, I, I said, I'm playing um, Fire Emblem Warriors. I'm trying to like get invested in this. I'm just having issues because at the end of the day, it's just a Dynasty Warriors game. So yeah, you know, I have to be in that mood to just turn More the brain like, off and just hit so, A. So. Yeah, that was a bad one. <laughs> yeah, that was. And we're gonna sit on uh, that. We're gonna sit on that. <laughs> Everyone, fair s- enough. Fair enough. Seep it up. They can't all be zingers. Seep, seep it. Up. Yeah, there you go. Yep. All right. It's all gone now. It's all gone. But uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't really have anything else. I'm slowly going through Stranger Things currently. I, I have two episodes. No, three episodes left. Oh wow. Um, and then once Friday hits, the boys. Woo! The boys. The last two episodes that I need to watch will. We'll uh, all be live, so me and the wife will finish that, and I cannot wait. Oh my god, I, I cannot so wait. Bad. I, I'll say two things real quick. I feel bad for all of TV because I'm halfway through Atlanta season three. Haven't gone back to finish that up yet, despite me loving that show. Uh, Stranger Things is one of my favorite TV shows ever, and I haven't even started the new season, bro. So like, I need to get on that. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to go back to Fargo because I started season three, but then just fell off, and now season four, Chris Rock has been out, so I need to go back to that. Um, just so much TV I need to catch up on. Uh, the other thing I'll say, I do not watch The Boys. Half of The Boys seems like it would be a sh- perfect for me, and the other half would traumatize me. <laughs> Are you, like, are you squeamish? Like are you squeamish with like blood and gore? I've realized that it depends on the context. Okay. Where, like in a video game, ultraviolence doesn't really get to me too bad. In some movies, ultraviolence can get to me. But if it's like comedically done, usually it's not too bad. But from a lot of the stuff I hear about the boys, there is some extreme violence. You do have on. to, yeah, you have to be in the mood for extreme violence. There's not that much extreme sexual violence, although there is a very notable thing at the beginning of the show. But that's a that's about it, as far as I understand. Eh, there's, a, mm. there's a little bit in, in the midway through the first season, but aside from that, that's it, too. But but yeah, if you don't want extreme violence, this is this might as well be called extreme violence, the show. Like, yeah, <laughs> it might as I well be say- like just comedically and politically, I've seen clips online of like, oh, this seems like the type of humor I'd be into. Yeah, you would. No, I, I, I've but seen like, the stuff that you you would enjoy. The humor, yeah, but you'd have but, to get past mm, the mm. sociopathic violence that is in. The yeah, show. that I'm not sure if I can get on board with, but I'll stick here with my Fargo's, my Stranger Things, my Atlantis, all that good stuff. Yeah. Oh, Abbott Elementary! I gotta finish Abbott Elementary. Jesus Christ, I'm so behind that. Abbott Elementary is that the. It's the new sitcom on ABC, uh, where it's basically uh, just a bunch of like elementary school teachers, okay. and it's written by Quinita Bronson, I uh-huh. believe. She was a big TikTok or not TikTok. She was a big Vine person back oh. in the day, um, and now she's gone all, all those the way millennials up to right now are like, "What's Vine?" Yeah. yeah, that show is actually it's one of those shows where it's a network comedy, and those shows are always hit or miss sometimes. But this one's like really good. The writing's like very clever, very snappy. Think like The Office, but in a school. With a mostly minority cast. Okay. And it's like, it's it's really good. Like, I didn't even, I wasn't checking for it or anything. My mom turned it on while she was doing my hair one day. And I was like, holy shit, this is really good. Zach Fox, who I was talking about earlier, that rapper comedian, he's in the show. He's like the girlfriend of the main character. And I was like, oh, this is like one of those shows. Like, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's still like universal in a way where anybody who flips the ABC can get down with it. It's really fucking good. It's really fucking. Good. It's been a long time since I watched a sitcom. Me and the wife watched The Office mm-hmm. like two years ago, like during COVID. So like, yeah, that that's like the last sitcom I've really like sat down and like had a watch through like over and over again. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's I, good. That, the that, guy from The Ray Hates Chris is in it too. It's it's got a decent cast. It's really good. My dad loved that show. I remember yeah. watching that with him. Samesies. Damn it. Thank you so much for joining me this weekend. Of, or sorry, this week. <laughs> Been a long week. <laughs> Been a long week. Sorry, everyone. That this uh, this was great. I th- again, thank you for subbing in for Mr. Alex while he is uh, mo- currently waiting for his child at any moment. So send yeah. every everyone send him well wishes. We give our hearts to them. We hope for a speedy recovery for the wife, of course, too. But uh, yes, aside indeed. from that, Emmett. That's the show for the week. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, you can stick right here every single week. 
we will have potentially a fluid schedule to accommodate uh, for Emmett because, of course, he has a job to, to worry about. So whenever he is able to record, hopefully Wednesday to Friday around that time, expect an episode. We will try to keep that as solid as possible. And then, of course, the Corey Spoiler Cast will be live pretty soon as of this going record. So check it back out in at least a day or two. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube podcast. Now, Alex... Or Alex, my God, I need to get off. It's been two hours. <laughs> Emmett, uh, please do me a favor. Where can they find you? Y'all can find me uh, at EJ Fun Six One. That's the Twitter. That's the uh, that's my name on everything. I actually stumbled across this the other day when I was recording a podcast with uh, Mario Pacquadio, uh Mario Not Bros on Twitter. Um, apparently, I have a DeviantArt account under that name, and I forgot about it because I made it when I was in high school. So kind of sick shit. Did you like on there? Huh? I literally only made it to comment one thing on one picture, and that's it. And if you want to see what that picture is, you can go look at that video. Uh, I will be retweeting it soon. I saw um, it. It was nice boobs. <laughs> it was not even like <laughs> I'll, I'll say it was a live action photo. I'll say that much. Oh. But it was well, technically there are boobs in the photo, but it that's stretching starting the definition to unravel <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, you could unravel this thing but anyway um so yeah uh, sponsored books where you can follow me uh i'm literally about to go put up the this week's episode of the players club so you can go, go check that out is the website for that I actually can you, have give a us, can you give us some flavor for the show oh like like what's going to be on this episode <laughs> Yes, Emmett. Okay. My God. Like, <laughs> yeah, we've both been talking for a long time. Yes, we um, have. Yeah, this episode, I've been teasing it for a long time. We're going to finally be talking about the new PlayStation Plus. We're going to be reviewing it. Uh, I actually have Kevin Diaz from PlayStation Source coming by to guest host with me on that one. Uh, so we just talk about PlayStation Plus for a while and say, is it good? Is it bad? Is it fine? Uh you know all that stuff i've been teasing you know we've been talking about playstation plus forever on my podcast i've been squeezing content out of it for the last like four months so now that it's finally out it took us a while to get through all the e3 stuff but now it's time to talk about it and so we get into that so look forward to that that should be out um this today i will have it done it's just a question of me posting it at this point because it's edited and stuff so yeah all that stuff vgu.tv is where you can find all the stuff i work on uh and also that kendrick review i'm trying to put out pretty soon too so look out for that check it out emmett will have all that up soon i'm sure as of recording we will be going live tomorrow so thursday remember just keep in touch with us through wednesday thursday i'm sure if you follow our twitter accounts as well we'll i'll be posting when all our videos go live so expect a fluid schedule for the podcast going forward until we can get Alex back. Emmett. I like that pronunciation of fluid. <laughs> fluid. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, achievers, go achieve. Ooh, ooh.